On day one, I was a small firefly, hurrying my way through the dark, muddy swamp. Ah, finally back home. Bozo, what are you doing? Turn off your light now, before they find us. Wait, who finds us? Just then, deadly frogs leapt through the tree line all around us and began attacking my people. Everyone was trying to fly away in panic. But the frogs were able to use their tongues and devour each and every one of us whole. <laughs> These swamp frogs have finally found more of you insects. <laughs> Eat them, boys. Eat them all. From just the toad's presence, my home began to be infested by a vile, poisonous fungus. Bozo, you have broken the Firefly's number one rule to never shine our light, and this is why! No, I'm sorry. I can fix this. Ah! You've done enough. All of this is your fault. We were interrupted by one of the frogs landing right in front of us. Everyone who's still alive, escape! On day two, a small group of us fireflies were trying to escape from the frogs. But as we were flying down the river, their tongues began darting out from the bushes. My people were being taken out one by one. Oh no! We all had to navigate through the tongues until barely reaching the trunk of a tree. Oh no, we're still not alone. Thank goodness you guys are all right. Ah! This is all your fault. You know we are never supposed to use our firelight. No wonder everybody thinks you're weak and delusional. We're going to look for other survivors. Look, I didn't mean for this to happen. I quickly tried to follow them out, but as I left the trunk, they were already gone. A nearby campsite, though, caught my eye. Maybe they went there. On day three, I wandered near the campsite as a human ran by excitedly. Oh boy, I got another one. Another what? I looked and saw that they were collecting different types of insects. Oh no. Guys, where did you go? This isn't funny. I passed a very large campfire and made my way towards the collection of jars. And thankfully, they hid me away from the huge humans. I turned to see an ant captured in one of the jars. Huh? Hey, have you seen any fireflies around here? What? No, I'm just surprised to see one with its light on. It's been decades. Wait, really? Do you know why we stopped using our light? As I said this, one of the humans came walking by. I barely ducked behind the ant jar in time. Whoa! Hmm, I must be seeing things. Too close. All right, listen up. You break me out of this jar and get me to that picnic with that sweet, sweet pumpkin pie. I'll tell you everything I know about you fireflies. Okay, deal. I flew up to try and open the jar, but instead I clumsily knocked it over, breaking it. That's one way to do it. Because of the noise, the humans turned and spotted us. A firefly? Hurry up and get me a jar. The humans chased me around the camp with jars in hand. Ah! Stay away from me! I was doing everything I could to avoid them. Stop it! Why are you doing this? Is he talking to us? I don't know, man. Just catch the thing. And I just need to find the rest of my people. But they didn't listen and swatted me right towards the campfire. Ah! ah! Because of its fire, I suddenly grew much stronger. What the... Huh? One of the humans charged at me with another jar, but I shot out a fireball? Ah, hot, hot, hot! They frantically ran around the camp, and when they touched their tent, it caused it to catch on fire. The ah! firefly is evil! Run! Uh, sorry. I turned to see the ant from before was on the picnic table, eating pumpkin pie. Ah, delicious. Okay, pal, this is the most beautiful food I've ever eaten. Yeah, yeah, good for you. Now, about the fireflies. Why did we stop using our fire? Right, come on, follow me. On day five, I followed the ant down a spooky path in the swamp where I heard, there 
are frogs here? Just stay low. We're here. We walked out to a large lake with an eerie green glow. Are you sure this is safe? You wanted to know about fireflies, right? Look around. Those horrible frogs are what happened. Years ago, this entire swamp was pure beauty, especially the lake. But one day, those dirty, wart-filled frogs came in, and they brought their poisonous filth with them. They also ate every insect in sight. And with our light, I'm guessing that made us the easiest targets. But why not stand and fight back against them? Why are you asking me? You fireflies are the ones who are supposed to maintain the balance here to begin with. Wait, we were? Just then, a powerful explosion erupted in between us. Ah! Wait, is this honey? Yes! Ah! More ribbits began to echo in the nearby trees. We need to find a safe place to hide, and fast. On day six, we were making our way through the vile swamp. Come on, there has to be a safe place around here. To make things easier, we got onto a lily pad to go down the nearest river. Uh, do you hear that? It sounds like... I looked up, and it was bringing us right towards a waterfall! No, no, no! Ah! We crashed down, and thankfully, we're unharmed. Wait, what is this place? I saw a hidden terrain in the swamp. It's so beautiful. This must have been what the swamp was like before the frogs. With that, I quickly got to work, building up a home for myself. I used a jar from the human camp. I don't know where the other fireflies went. But I have to find them and show them that we can't live in fear. If they won't stand up against those frogs, then I will. After finalizing my home, I noticed that the ant had built himself his own personal anthill. And is that the honey? Of course. Food is food, dude. Can't let it go to waste. By the way, my name's Crum. Nice to meet you, Crum. Suddenly, another huge pile of honey splatted down onto us. Ah, gross. Oh, sweet nectar. Okay, seriously? Where is this stuff coming from? On day seven, I followed a trail of honey left on the ground until reaching a flower forest. And there was a strange scientist bee. Ah, this stupid test. Why did it have to fail? Why? Hey, are you the one causing those honey explosions? Ah! Oh, it's just a little fly. A firefly. Yeah, whatever. So, the honey's shooting out that far, is it? That's not good. He is not going to be happy. Who's he? Just then, I heard a loud roar coming from nearby. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, what, you just shot it? We looked out to see a gigantic bear closing in, sniffing the air. I had an idea and shot out one of my fireballs out in the distance. Because of this, the bear turned towards it and ran off. Whoa, you have actual fire powers? Oh my goodness, this could be it. Wait, what could be? You, follow me now. On day eight, the bee led me to his hive town, nestled in the forest. Okay, look, that bear we saw, he comes here every single week, demanding for our honey and destroying everything. So, we were testing some experiments to expand ours, to fend him off and keep some for ourselves. And I guess something went wrong. Yeah. That went wrong. He pointed to the far side of the town, and there loomed a honeycomb volcano. It suddenly erupted with more globs of honey, slamming into a bee. Ah! He brought me to the volcano's entrance, and as we approached... Hot! Oh, too hot! Uh, ignore him. <laughs> Here's the deal. We used a special fire flower for this experiment. It's too hot for us to handle. But you 
you, on the other hand... Wait, you want me to retrieve it? Fine. Only because it's destroying my home. On days 9 to 10, I headed inside the Honeycomb Volcano, where I was quickly met with blasts of burning honey. Ah! Okay, stay calm. Looking around the area, I saw that the fire flower had completely overtaken the volcano. Testing, testing. Okay, what you're looking for is in the core room, the deepest part of the volcano. And you must hurry. This entire thing is gonna blow soon. No pressure. I hurried through all the different rooms, passing by a nectar beach and a library? These are just so weird. I heard that. But as I was leaving, I saw a book titled Fireflower, One of the Eternal Flames. Eternal Flames? What are those? Another quake shook the entire volcano as I reached the final hallway leading to the core room. It was broken up and hot honey poured from above and it was about to seal off the room. No, come on. I quickly navigated through the hot honey and flew under the last drop just in time. Ha, I did it. Finally, I made it into the volcano's core room, but there, the large fire flower was waiting for me, and it surprisingly looked very upset. On days 11 to 12, the enraged fire flower began to unleash its hot honey attacks all throughout the room. Ah! How do I even stop this thing? I looked out and spotted three different levers all around. On it! I dashed towards the first one and flipped it, causing the mouth of the volcano to begin to close. That's it! If I close that, then the flower can't shoot out its honey. As soon as I said this, an explosion of nectar hit me back, almost knocking me into a pool of hot honey. Whoa! Spotting the second lever, I unleash a fireball, flipping it too. One more to go. But the fire flower seemed to sense what I was doing and summoned other fire plant creatures to its defense. Oh no! I flew over them as they reached out to strike, making it to the final lever just in time! Ha! I did it! The volcano was fully closed off, and without any sunlight, the creatures withered away. Aw, look at the fire flower! It's all small and cute now. I went up and collected it for the bees, but as I did, its fire caused me to grow even stronger. I gained five more hearts and grew out my very own fire wings that allowed me to rain down a flame barrage attack. Whoa, why does this keep happening? But then the volcano quaked again. And this time it was caused by the giant bear clawing it open. My honey. Oh no, time to get out of here. On days 13 to 14, I escaped the volcano. That stupid bear. All he cares about is honey this, honey that. He wouldn't know a good experiment if it stuck him in the face. Okay, calm down. Look, I'm sorry, but we kind of have to leave now before he sees us. The remaining scientists and I fled to another area of the flower forest. Ah, your wings. That fire flower must have empowered you. Just as I expected in my hypothesis. You gotta love those eternal flames. The eternal flames? What is that? They are very rare objects. The wispy campfire, the fire flower, the never-ending torch, the burning flashlight, and the ignited lily pad. If my research is correct, they are meant to bring light to the swamps and aid the fireflies. That's it. If I find them all, maybe I can grow strong enough to fend off those swamp frogs and take back the swamp for our people. Come on, I know a better place for you all to stay. On days 15 to 16, I brought the bee scientists back to my home. Together, we built them a new beehive high up in the tree. And because of this, they began to work on a new honey laboratory in the base. Hey, thanks for that. 
We'll take it from here. All right. Just no more volcanoes, okay? Yeah, yeah, whatever, pal. Look, if you ever need anything, just call for me. The name's Buzz. Glad you're willing to help, Buzz. Suddenly, I heard Crumb yelling out, and he was frantically hopping around the base. What's the deal, man? There you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. I was out searching for, well, food, but I saw more of your kind. Other fireflies? Yeah, but you're not gonna like where they are. On day 17 to 18, Crumb led me to the nastiest part of the swamp I had ever seen. It was covered with poisonous fungus and warts everywhere. And crawling within it were swamp frogs. You're taking us here? Do you want us to die? Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to be a good friend and help you find your people. Yeah, right. Sorry, just show me where you saw them. I followed him as we stealthily passed by the wandering swamp frogs and reached the heart of their territory. Their poisonous goop was spreading all around, encasing countless other insects. And sitting on his lily pad throne was the large swamp toad. Look around. We've never been stronger. This swamp is ours. As our filth spreads, all its creatures will have nowhere to hide. They'll only serve to fill our stomachs. I looked over and saw in a separate pile were my firefly people. Oh my goodness. You guys are okay. Uh, so, what are you doing here? I quietly burned away some of the goop freeing some of my people, getting you guys out. Now, come on. Gah, you're still using your light. Look where that got us. Not now. We'll talk about this later. As I was bringing everyone back the way we came, a frog was now hopping down it. Great. We need to find another exit. Everyone was too weak to fly. So I looked around and spotted that there were lily pads making a path across the lake. We have to do this fast. Let's go. They began jumping from pad to pad as I stayed close behind, making sure everyone got out safe until... Oh no! Run! It shot its tongue at one of the fireflies, but Crumb managed to push them to safety. I unleashed my flame barrage attack at them, which hit him directly in his eye. Whoa. How did you do that? With that, we used the opportunity to run from the frog swamp. The fireflies escaped! Ha! On days 22 to 26, we safely made it out of the swamps with all of my people. Seriously, whoa, how did you do that? It's a long story. I'm just glad you're safe. Don't think this changes anything. We were in that mess because of you. Look, I'm just trying to do what I can to get rid of those frogs so that we can live freely again. Those frogs, they cannot be beaten. It's a death wish. Well, when I find all the eternal flames, we'll see about that. Uh, did you say eternal flame? I've heard of one of those. Wait, you have? He led Crumb and I off as the rest of the fireflies followed the king back to my base. It's supposedly deep inside this scary forgotten temple. So be ready. But as we approached the top of the hill, I looked out and saw a fast food place? Oh, score! Oh, yeah, uh, I forgot. The temple used to be here, but humans built this over it. You just need to get into the basement. Okay, got it. On days 27 to 29, Crum and I managed to slip through a crack into the restaurant. It was after hours, but a worker was still there preparing food. Ho, ho, ho. I'm going to make my best burger yet! Mm, burgers! Hey, hey! Focus! Do not go after that burger! We made a break for a door that led to the basement, but it was locked! Great! Suddenly, the chef stormed by us on his way to gather ingredients! Whoa! Okay, my best guess is that chef has a key! We have to make sure that we stay quiet so that we can steal it from him! So what we're gonna do is... Wait, 
crumb? I looked, and he was on the burger. What are you doing? This burger is amazing. Holy guacamole. An ant on my gourmet dish? I kill it. I kill it now. Oh, come on. The chef ran to the pantry and grabbed a potato launcher. He began firing potatoes all over the kitchen, trying to smush crumb. Hey, I flew in using my flames to fend him off. Ah! It's an insect revolution! Protect the gourmet dishes! Gourmet? It's fast food, dude! Ah, what was that? In his anger, he shot out a potato that bounced off the wall and hit him in the head knocking himself out. I flew over and grabbed the key from him. Really? You just had to have a burger, huh? Oh, uh, sorry. On days 30 to 32, we made our way successfully into the basement, only to see that it was littered with expired food food. Yuck. One man's yuck is another man's buffet. Past all the junk, I saw the entrance to a strange stone temple. How did they not notice this? We walked up to the doors as they slowly creaked open and whispers filled the air. Creepy. Inside was a long, dark hallway, but at the end was a fiery light. The never-ending torch. You go ahead. Someone's got to take care of all this trash, you know. Okay, if I can just get there, I'll get stronger. On days 33 to 35, I stepped into the hallway, but because of this, it began to stretch before my very eyes. Suddenly, the doors slammed shut, and I looked to see that I was now in a crystalline maze. So it was a trap. I need to find that torch. I began to move through the maze and strange shadows filled within it. Huh? Then out of the walls dropped golems. They started launching shadowy figures out at me. Whoa, whoa. They kept appearing and looked like they were trying to drag me into the walls. Ah! I hurried through the maze in a panic until I ran into the center chamber. And there it was, the torch. Almost there. But as I made my way towards it, my path was blocked by hooded villagers. Those who do not have us in the shadows shall perish in darkness. I'm sorry, what the what? They wasted no time and began to attack me with their shadows. Ah! My attacks weren't working on them, but then it hit me. The darkness. I used my fire abilities, which lit up the room, causing them to back away from me. Fire and light is their weakness. With this in mind, I went up and ran for the torch. All right, now, don't grab that. I didn't listen, and when I grabbed it, I instantly upgraded. I gained five more hearts and two powerful fire fists. Whoa, this is sick. In my new form, I was able to shoot out fire from my fists which lit up the room so much that the shadows vanished. <laughs> Turning around, I saw that the hallway had returned to normal. Okay, time to get out of here. I started to head out of the underground basement with Crumb, but as I did, I saw a customer yelling for service. Hello? Is anyone here? Oh, a potato! This looks amazing! The customer ran over to grab it and ate it. Oh no, those are the ones he was shooting at us. Oh, uh, uh, what? Huh? Oh no, he's back up. You there? Are you the chef? This potato here is amazing! I will come here for service every day for the rest of my life! <laughs> oh, uh, oh my! <laughs> Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> the chef then turned over and saw us. Oh, this is because of you crazy little bugs. Here, take this burger as an award. Yes. Yes! This is the best day of my life! On days 36 to 39, we made it safely back to base, where I saw all the fireflies did too. I helped them settle in by building cozy, tree-lit homes for them. Once I finished, I was able to place the gourmet burger from the fast food place in front of Crumb's Anthill. I'll never be hungry again! I... 
think you will. Oh, there you are. Come with me. We've got something for you. Okay. I followed him. And so they're now fully functioning honey lab. Whoa, you built all of this? You sound surprised? Come on, we're worker bees, you know? We're science- uh, Anyway, look, this is what I found. He tossed me over a GPS tracker? Yeah, we've been looking for anything that gives off that same level of heat as the other eternal flames. There's a lot of activity coming from the area tracked on that thing. Another flame could be there. Say less. I flew out towards the area, but when I reached the clearing, I saw that it was a field set on fire. Not only that, but poisonous goop from the frogs was everywhere. Oh no, it's a trap. Before I could react though, Ranid and his swamp frogs leapt out of the trees and I was completely surrounded. Are you that little foil flaw that freed my snacks? Those snacks are my people. All of the insects you're eating, you're ruining the swamp because of it. One of the frogs was about to shoot out its tongue, but- Stop! He's mine! I used the opening to fly up and try to get away, but Ranid jumped up and knocked me back down. Ah! <laughs> I admire your bravery. All the rest of your kind are scared little cowards who deserve to be eaten. And with you gone, that is all they will ever be. He lunged to eat me, and I barely dodged out of the way and tried my new fire fist attack. But he just laughed it off. <laughs> oh, was that supposed to hurt? He knocked me back again, and I was now extremely weak. Don't worry, I'll make all your friends get quick one. Ranid then shot out his tongue, swallowing me whole. On days 45 to 47, I woke up in a gross area. Ah, my head. I looked around at my new surroundings and realized I was inside Ranid's stomach. Oh no, that's it. I'm gonna die here. Ahead of me was a green glow coming from another chamber. Gross. Is that stomach acid? Why, yes, it is. What the? Wait, a group of half decayed insects? Ah, you guys are alive, but you're gross. Don't worry. In time, you'll be just like us. All the bugs who get eaten eventually do. They led me to their small camp, where there were even more of them. Hey, I'm flying here! What? I'm all the way down here! You guys all live here? So what? You just gave up? We've searched for an exit, buddy, but every path is blocked by acid. We've been trying everything. There's no use. No, no, there has to be a way out. Out of frustration, I unleashed a fire punch that struck one of the stomach walls. Because of this, the whole stomach shook and the pools of stomach acid began bubbling. That's it. I have an idea. On days 48 to 52, all of the bugs began tossing their things into the stomach acid. Wait, what are you guys doing? Look, if you could use my fire to create a big boom, we could possibly force that frog to throw us up. That is gross, but worth a try. What about all of you and your stuff? We're weak and only getting weaker. We don't have much time left. This frog has taken our lives, our freedom. Please, just promise you'll do what's right and stop him, no matter what happens to the rest of us. I, I promise. Hey, you're the firefly, right? The one looking for the eternal flames? Wait, how did you know? I just got eaten recently. Everyone out there has heard of what you're doing. The blazing flashlight is one of the flames. It was in my home, a dumpster in the city. You gotta find it, please, mister. Yeah, thank you, I will, and thanks to each and every one of you. Farewell, Fozo. There in the acid was the pile of their things. Here goes nothing. I struck the pile and the acid, causing the stomach to shake violently. Okay, here goes nothing. Whoa! 
Looking around, I saw I was high above a busy city. Humans were walking around everywhere, not paying attention at all. This must be the place the snail was talking about. Okay, I still gotta be careful. I journeyed through the streets until I finally found an alleyway with a dumpster. Jackpot! Once I flew inside, I was greeted by the view and smell of a world of trash. Yuck! I gotta stop going into places that smell this bad. As I landed, I heard voices coming from nearby. Huh? What was that? Oh no, I gotta hide. What? I swore I heard someone coming onto our turf. You gotta get your ears checked, man. Eh, come on, hurry up. We're gonna miss dinner. The rats ran off. Wait, mobster rats? This just keeps getting weirder and weirder. I began to search around the dumpster and it didn't take long for me to find the blazing flashlight. Yes, I rushed to grab it, but nothing happened. It's out of batteries? Seriously? Hey, buddy! Um, oh no. <laughs> Hi. On days 57 to 59, I was brought before the rat mob boss. You come here on the day of our great cheese feast. Look, I I'm sorry. I don't mean to intrude. I just need... Oh, be quiet. Get this loser out of my sight. Hey, ah! Now... Someone cut the cheese. Cheese? I looked over to see they had revealed a large blender full of cheese and the batteries. They're in there. I used my fire fists to break out and dash towards the blender. What in the world? Somebody get him. One of the rats jumped in the way. So I shot a fireball at him. But it missed and hit directly at the blender. Oh no, the machine, it's malfunctioning. All of the cheese began to shower the entire dumpster. Whoa, I'm in heaven. Uh, this cheese stuff is wonderful. Oh. I love some dairy. Is that cheddar? Sweet, sweet mozzarella. Hey, <laughs> this cheese is pretty good. <laughs> Bada bing. <laughs> and the rats began to eat all of it. You know what, Pat? Well, I underestimated you. Hey, Georgie, get this guy his batteries or whatever he needs. The rat ran up and handed me a pair of batteries. Oh, cool, thanks. I put them into the flashlight, which turned it on and caused me to upgrade. I gained five more hearts and can now unleash a blinding tail light attack. Sick. On day 60 to 63, I was about to enter back into my base when I found my king by himself. I've been meaning to talk to you. Talk to me? Look, I didn't mean for all of our people to be found, okay? I just- Stop. It's not your fault, it's mine. Long ago, these swamps were nothing but pure beauty. Us fireflies, we were the ones that kept it safe with our light. But then, those frogs came and showed us who was really in control. As king, I should have stood against them, but instead, I forced us all to dim our light and hide. But now you've shown me we still have a chance. I'm proud of you, and I want to help however I can. Wow. Uh, thank you. Our moment was interrupted by one of the decayed bugs. Hey, you made it out. No, no, no. I saw you in that frog's belly. I overheard you talking about the eternal flames, right? Oh, yeah. You know about them too? Yeah, I was one of the lucky insects that did. And I'll do anything to get back at that toad. He has got to go. My other dragonfly people will look after the last one you need. Awesome. Wait, you think they'd be willing to help us? You do know dragonflies eat insects like me, right? Yeah, come on. They wouldn't hurt a fly. Oh, no. On days 64 to 68, the decayed dragonfly brought me to his people's territory by a grand waterfall at the edge of the swamp. So, you said I'll be safe here, right? As I said this, a massive dragonfly burst through the trees, heading right towards me. Ah! Come here. I haven't eaten in days. You said they wouldn't hurt a fly. I flew through the area, trying to get him off my tail, but it wasn't working. So I blinded him with my new tail light attack. Ugh. Hey, stop it. He's cool, man. Yeah, yeah, please. 
listen to your friend. The dragonfly reluctantly listened as we flew to the top of their terrain, where I saw just how beautiful their part of the forest was. The frogs haven't even touched this place. Yes, and it's going to stay that way. Let them destroy everything else for all I care. Wait, what? Are you guys just gonna watch as the frogs take over? It's all of our home. Let's stay focused. We're here for the eternal flame. <sighs> right this way. They took me through the waterfall and into a cavern where there was a lava fall flowing into a lake. At its center floated the ignited lily pad. Yes, I flew towards it, but the dragonfly cut me off. Hold on there, hotshot. You want that thing? First, you gotta do something for us. On day 69 to 73, the dragonfly leader and I were looking down over a human carnival. These humans are even more vile than the frogs. They moved in recently and began to expand their freak show onto our turf, destroying it all. If you really want the ignited lily pad, go there and make them lead. You want me, a bug, to convince a ton of humans who can't understand me to make them leave. Okay, yep, copy that. I slowly made my way into the carnival, as there were humans of all sizes having the time of their lives. <laughs> this is so much fun. <laughs> hey, this isn't so bad. But as I looked around even more, I watched as a kid started to hit a pig in its pen. <laughs> it's so bad. Who wants bacon wrapped corn dogs? Yes! Me, 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 me. Oh my goodness, they're hurting the animals. I gotta take this place down. While everyone was running to the corn dog stand, I noticed a well-dressed man walking into the huge central tent. He must be the one running this entire place. A corn dog for you, a corn dog for everyone. On day 74 to 77, I flew into the central tent, approaching the ringmaster. Hey, uh, sir? It seems your circus is... Oh, no! A bug in my circus? Ah! He blasted me with a cloud of disgusting vapor. Ooh! Good thing I always keep my insect repellent on me. <laughs> now to smush you before any of those customers see. Time to go. I tried to fly away, but I was so dizzy from the vapor. I could barely fly straight. Whoa, whoa! I accidentally ran into a pile of flammable materials, causing them to burst into flames. What? What? What's happening? My fire burned up the ropes of the tent, rapidly spreading flames across the entire thing. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, the humanity! The entire place is burning to the ground! Hey, I haven't finished my corn dog yet. Hello, is this thing on? Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, please remain calm. Remain? Uh, oh, who am I kidding? Fire! Everyone run! All the humans fled the circus ground as the tent burned. Hey, you did it! You actually did it! Yeah, totally meant to do that. <laughs> we then heard ruffling off to the side, only to see the dragonfly leader was eating a ton of the carnival's cotton candy. This human food is delicious. We have enough here to feed us for the rest of our lives. I'm never going back to eating insects. On day 78 to 84, I was heading back to the waterfall with the dragonflies when poisonous rain began to pour over the area. Oh no. Suddenly, in a huge burst of goo, the swamp frogs leapt in, attacking and devouring dragonflies. With you dragonflies out of the way, all of this swamp will be more eating grounds. Chaos from the battle was all around me as one of the frogs leapt in to attack. Yeah, But then, Ranid spotted me. You? You're still alive? How? Oh, what? Are you not impressed anymore? Do you realize it was all your fault that we found you fireflies? And they were a nice meal. 
He lunged at me as we began to fight. I tried to blind and burn him with my abilities, but he pushed through every attack until slamming into me, sending me through the waterfall. Ah, ah. Wait, the ignited lily pad. I really will enjoy eating you. <laughs> Again. Suddenly, the decayed dragonfly swooped in, hitting him back. Hey, you ugly lug! I got a bone to pick with you! Now's my chance! On days 85 to 90, while the dragonfly distracted Ranid, I seized the opportunity to grab the ignited lily pad. Its fire surged within me as I upgraded. I gained 10 more hearts and became much more powerful. But as I turned around, Ranid hit the dragonfly against the cave walls, killing him. No! The impact was so strong, causing the waterfall to cave in with me inside. Ah! As the dusk cleared, the only way out was up. So I flew up into the toxic rain. Ah! It burns! I saw that the swamp frogs were gone, and there were almost no dragonflies left. What happened in there? Where's the other dragonfly? I'm sorry. He didn't make it. Look, these frogs, they don't even realize how much of the swamp they're ruining. It's wrong, and I need all the help I can get. We're done for. No home, barely any people. No, I have an idea. You guys should come with me. On days 91 to 94, I brought the dragonflies to my home and gathered everyone around. Ranid and the swamp frogs, they've done enough. None of us can stand it anymore, and I'm going to face them. All the fireflies then look to our king. For too long, I have snuffed out the flame of the fireflies. And now, it is you, Fozo, who will lead us into a life of light. We are with you. Suddenly, all of the fireflies' lights burned bright as the whole base was lit up. I felt a wave of heat like I never had before as my flame burned the brightest. Let's go burn some frogs. Because of this, I felt so much stronger. This entire time, you wanted to stop the frogs. To prove to us we shouldn't live in fear. You shouldn't fight alone. It's time we fight for our people and take them down together. I'm glad I have you guys to back me up. On days 95 to 99, the army of fireflies and I landed in a clearing of the wart-infested swamp. There, across from us, was Ranid and his frogs. This is it. We're not afraid anymore. So be it, man. Frogs, devour them. We all flew into attack. The fireflies launched volleys of, of fireballs towards the frogs, and it was working. Our flames burned so bright that we actually stood a chance. The frogs were ruthless, though, and kept fighting. So I flew down and took out a wave of them with my abilities. Whoa! A tongue flew out, but my king jumped in the way, and thankfully, the frog couldn't eat him because... <laughs> Our flames, they're too hot for them. The frog was then taken down by Crumb's bite. I got him. Whoa, dude, you could do that? Go, Fozo. We can take these guys on, but him, he's all yours. On day 100, I faced Ranit at the center of the murky swamp. So, the little firefly really thinks he can defeat me? <laughs> this swamp belongs to me! You all are nothing but food! A meal! And when I'm finished with you, all of your friends will be eaten too! No, they won't! I'm not afraid of you anymore, Ranid! None of us are! And this ends now! Because of my anger, I felt the fire I gathered along my journey fuel within me. Ranid launched his massive tongue at me as the fight began, and I dodged around the air, hitting him with everything I could. You'll need more than that to beat me. He leapt up and slammed into me, sending me to the ground. Ah! Ow! As I said from the very beginning, you insect. 
You and your tiny little friends never stood a chance. Granted was about to eat me whole. But I unleashed my fire fists and was actually able to push him back now. Each strike weakened him further and further. This is for all of the innocent creatures you've eaten. This swamp is our home. I then summoned the strength of my new ability, a beam of firelight, which shot down right onto Ranid. No, this can't be! The beam caught up to him and engulfed him in flames, ending him for good. With that, the swamps were freed and all of us innocent creatures could now finally live in peace. On day one, I spawned in as a baby Charmander right outside of the nearest town. There were vast Pokemon roaming throughout the nearby hills with lots of different trainers running around and battling one another. Whoa, this is awesome. But out of nowhere, flooded in an army full of strange looking water Pokemon, all led by their enormous Gyarados leader. They all started to flood in and destroy everything in sight, feigning all of the nearby Pokemon. No! Everybody run! The trainers tried their best to escape, but each of them got captured one by one. Why is this happening? Yes! Yes! The water Pokemon are in charge now, and everyone will truly see our power! Water blasted from the sky, and I thought none of us were going to make it, when suddenly, my older brother Charizard flew straight towards him. Stop this now! The two of them battled each other in the sky, each shooting out incredibly powerful abilities. My brother was amazing. I think he's gonna win! Take this! The Gyarados shot out the most powerful water attack that I'd ever seen, shooting my brother right down in front of me. Brother! Fozo, uh, leave! Find Pikachu at once! He knows how he can get stronger and stop this! But how? Before my brother could say anything else, another water attack was shot down, fainting him for good! No! <laughs> With the Grand Charizard is down, nothing will stop us! Now, take out that little flame! On day two, I was doing my best trying to lose the water Pokemon. We can't let him escape. It wasn't long until we came across a large tree connecting two valleys. Wait, I have an idea. I ran to the start of the tree and knew as a Charmander, I had a fireball attack, Ember. I used it, shooting the tree all over. I did my best in navigating through the fire to reach the other side of the tree. But the longer we were on it, the weaker and weaker the trunk became. Come on, just a little longer. I jumped and made it to the other side. And as I did, the tree trunk snapped and fell fully down the cliff. <laughs> that was close. I thought I was safe, but a water blastoise landed right behind me. Oh no. You are a threat to Gyarados and not going anywhere. I thought I was done for, but in a huge surge of lightning shot in, Pikachu. Pikachu. On day three, Pikachu started to defend me. He shot out extremely powerful lightning attacks. Thunderbolt! Blastoise fought back though with attacks of his own. It was a close battle, but Pikachu was able to blast him one final time, shooting him off the ledge. Whoa, you, my brother, he told me to find you too. I know, it looks like the water Pokemon have begun their attack. Follow me, quick. I followed Pikachu until we reached a large ancestral room with stone that had strange writing throughout it. And in the center lied a firestone. Pikachu shot me with lightning, knocking me into the stone. Because of this, my body started to change. I gained five more hearts and was now in an upgraded form, turning me into Charmeleon. Whoa! There are four more of these out in the world, each making any fire Pokemon stronger. This isn't the first time the water Pokemon and Gyarados have attacked. 
Why? Why is he doing this? Apparently, he has a very dark past. One that would turn any Pokemon into where he is at today. But it has been told that a fire Pokemon would emerge and his flame would burn hotter than the sun itself, enough to evaporate even the fiercest waves. A fire Pokemon? But our number one weakness is water. Which is why Gyarados will be your toughest battle. Well, they fainted my brother and kidnapped those trainers. I will do whatever it takes to put an end to them. Just then, the cave started to shake and water started to leak throughout the walls. Oh no, we gotta get out of here. On day four, Pikachu and I ran through the cave while water started to fill up around us. It wasn't long until we reached a large pool of water, preventing us to get to the exit. I am definitely not touching that. We're trapped. Just then, I had a surge of power within me, causing me to unleash my new dragon's breath attack. Whoa, I have an idea. I use it on the water, creating a cobblestone bridge for us to cross. Come on. With that, the two of us were barely able to make it. Phew, that was close. I then looked up, only to see that we were inside a beautifully hidden valley. Whoa. This seems like a safe spot to hide from the water Pokemon. Agreed. From there, I went out and got enough materials to make myself a set of stone tools. I then made both Pikachu and I our very own fire-themed Pokemon Center. Now, if we need healing, we will know where to go. We will need it. This Gyarados isn't like the other ones. He is much stronger. I tried to fight him once, thinking I can take him down easily, but... It ended in me losing and him taking my trainer, Ash. I will do whatever I can to save him. Don't worry. I promise I will do whatever I can to help. Just then, I heard explosions sound off and looked throughout the horizons, only to see a large air balloon. What is that? On day five, I followed the noises until I saw a clearing revealing a bunch of Bulbasaurs. They were being attacked and captured by two strange looking trainers? Yes. We have to bring all of these to the boss. Anything for Team Rocket. Team Rocket? Hey, knock it off. I went in and attacked the trainers, setting them on fire. Whoa, a Charmeleon. We must have you. The girl threw a Pokeball, revealing a large poison type, Arbok. Oh no. It began to shoot out deadly poison attacks at me. I did my best trying to fight back, shooting my new Dragon Breath ability every chance that I could. But the Arbok was just way too strong. Is this how I'm gonna go out? Stay away from us. The last Bulbasaur, though, jumped in and whipped at the Arbok with a strong attack. With the two of us combined, we were able to fully faint the poison Pokemon. Rude! We will be back. You'll regret this. Thanks for standing up for me. Those water Pokemon came by and flooded my home. Then that evil Team Rocket attacked us shortly after. Of course. I'm doing what I can to stop Gyarados for all trainers and Pokemon. But I have to get stronger first. Stronger? Well, I may know of a place that'll help you. The Pokemon Stadium. On day six, Bulbasaur led me into a beachy area, heading straight towards a Pokemon Stadium? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a big deal. It wasn't long until we were cut off by a large, taken over tropical town. There was a huge castle towering over everything, with Gyarados himself flying around it. Yes, work! You stupid traitors have used us Pokemon to do your bidding for too long! Now it's my turn! We had to carefully sneak across the town in order to reach the stadium. We can't get caught! While we were sneaking, I noticed multiple trainers that were forced to help build up the Gyarados' empire. This is awful! As I was distracted, a water guard spotted me. Intruder! Oh no! Run! We started to run while the Pokemon chased right after us until we both ran over loose ground, causing us to fall deep below the surface. Ah! Was that a Charmeleon? Yes, it was. Ah! It must be fainted immediately! I cannot let that fire Pokemon prophecy come true! Start searching for him!
On day seven, Bulbasaur and I landed deep inside a mysterious red tunnel system. Ah, my head. We both looked forward and saw blue lights coming from the distance. Wait, this is it. I followed him only to reveal a large main stadium room. Whoa, high up above the main stadium rested the Firestone. That's what I need. Ah, I'm guessing you're another runaway. I've been getting a ton. A lot of homes are being destroyed by those water types. No, I'm here to get that Firestone, though. Sorry, pal. Only the one who enters and wins this tournament will be given that stone. But there may be a way you can enter yourself. How? The Monferno jumped down. I love putting on a show, but I can't do that without a microphone. Some guy came by and stole mine. If you go and get it back, I'll enter you in the tournament. On day eight, I followed Monferno's directions on my own until I reached a large maze. What is this place? I turned only to see a Jigglypuff singing to himself with a microphone. Hey, I need that. No way. I love to sing and this microphone is now mine. The Jigglypuff from there got up and started to run through the maze. Hey, Get back here! I chased after it, and as I did, I heard his singing echoing throughout the walls and even came across some of his melodies. I'm starting to feel tired. I have to keep searching. I followed the melodies until I reached the center of the maze where Jigglypuff was waiting on a performing stadium. La, 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 la. Enough! I charged in and started to fight him with my fire abilities, but he retaliated with more melody attacks. I was about to fall asleep, but thankfully, I shot out an ability right at the microphone. This caused him to drop it. Ha <laughs> ha! This is mine. Whatever! Take it! See if I care! On days 9 to 10, I brought the microphone straight back to Monferno. Oh yeah! This is what I'm talking about! Alrighty, folks, next up, Charmeleon versus our toughest opponent yet. Wait, what? I made my way to the center of the arena and revealed in front of me was a way stronger fire Pokemon, Arcanine. The winner of this will receive the Firestone. Begin! Arcanine rushed towards me and began to shoot out fire. Ah! I fought back, but I could tell that we were evenly matched. Hey, I don't want to faint you. Well, I want that Firestone. This is a tough battle, folks. The winner can be anyone at this point. Come on. I have to win. Just then, an explosion sounded on the top of the arena, revealing the water Pokemon and Gyarados. Oh no. A water shot was blasted down, fully fainting Arcanine. Where is the Charmeleon? On days 11 to 12, Gyarados and his army of water Pokemon began to flood in throughout the entire stadium. They would attack anyone with their powerful water attacks. Oh no, I have to get the Firestone. I ran over in a chaos and was able to grab it. This caused me to grow and my tail flame to burn even brighter. I gained five more hearts and learned a new move, Fire Fang. Ah, stay away! I looked over and saw that a Krabby had cornered my friends. They need my help. I ran over and used my new attack on the Krabby. Ah, he fainted with just one hit. Whoa, I am getting stronger. Not for long. There, in the center of the stadium, was Gyarados. Stop this, Gyarados! Let all of the Pokemon and trainers go! No! Not until my plans are complete! All of you and these stupid trainers have looked down on me and my previous form like I was some kind of joke! Even my own trainer abandoned me! But now! I will be in control of them all! I will be the strongest Pokemon by getting rid of the rest! Monferno rushed into attack and hit him with Fire Punch. Get out of here, you two! Now! Bulbasaur and I did as he said and ran out of the arena just in time to see Monferno faint to Gyarados' Hydro Pump. No!
On days 13 to 14, we barely made it back to base after escaping from the horde of water Pokemon. Oh, there you are. I was worried sick. Get situated, and when you're ready, I found out some useful information. Sounds good. I used my tools to gather enough materials to build Bulbasaur his very own grass-type home. Wow, you made it look so easy. Thanks so much. Of course. We gotta stick together. I then ran over to Pikachu and I's home. So, you know the professor, right, Fozo? The what? Professor Oak, he is a world-renowned Pokemon professor, and he may know more about these Firestone locations. Great. We have to find him then. That's just the thing. I went out looking for him myself and, well, why don't I show you myself? On days 15 to 16, I followed Pikachu to Professor Oak's laboratory, only to see that it was almost completely destroyed, with water all throughout its floors. What happened here? By the looks of it, the water types have found him first. Oh, this can't be good. Uh, what was that? We ran towards the noise to see an opening into a ravine where Professor Oak was standing on a boulder in the distance. There he is. Hey, we need your... Wait, young one, look. This place is swarming with diglets. I looked out and saw a ton of diglets digging up and back down through the floor. Diglet, dig. I noticed there were still some platforms made of rock to reach the professor. Just stay right there. I'll save you. Be careful. They will trap you in the earth if you get too close. I started to jump between the rocks and made my way towards him. I then felt the rocks begin to move below me as Diglett rose from the ground and grabbed at me. Ah! Stop that! I used my dragon's breath and sprayed them down, scaring them off as I was finally able to jump to the boulder with the professor. My, my. You are one brave Charmeleon, why would you risk yourself to save me? We really need your help. On days 17 to 18, we went back to the lab with Professor Oak, and he looked around at all of his damaged equipment. Oh dear, with all those water Pokemon attacked, I barely made it out alive. It looks like they either destroyed or stole all my research. Wait, they stole research? But why? Professor Oak turned my attention to a set of screens that were the only ones still working in the lab. Well, I can't tell for sure, but if I had to guess. They stole my research on Pokemon immunity. That doesn't sound good. The professor walked over to a chest and pulled out a map. The coordinates on this map should lead you to where another Firestone is. And by giving you this, can I ask you to help me build a new laboratory? You have a deal, Professor Oak. As I was about to reach the coordinates, I came across a large gap, and the only bridge that seemed to cross it was blocked by a giant sleeping Pokemon? Great! How am I supposed to get across this? That guy ain't waking up anytime soon, pal! I looked over to see a colorful flower creature on the side of the bridge. This Pokemon right here is a Snorlax, and he won't wake up for anything except the sound of a Poke Flute. I could have told you that. Oh yeah? But do you know where it is, Smarty Pants? Didn't think so! Alright, well, can you take me there then? The plan agreed, and we split up while the others headed back to base. Oh, poor little Charmeleon. Can't get what you want so easily. Now you know how it feels, and soon enough, when you least expect it, we'll snatch you right up! On days 19 to 21, I followed the plant through the forest trees until I saw a ledge high up on a hillside. And there was the pokey flu. There it is. I ran through the clearing to get it, but there was this huge flower and it began to attack me. Ah! <laughs> get tricked, you stupid fire starter. The mutant flower began to swat at me with its vines from the ground, and it would constantly try and hold me still. I fought using all of my fire type attacks at my disposal, but it just kept shooting out powerful attacks, and even bugs would come and try to bite at me. Don't you know? Fire beat grass! Ah! With another powerful fire fang attack, I was able to take the flower down. I did it! Now, as for you... <laughs> 
Huh, that's what I thought. I wasted no time running up and grabbing the pokey flute and made my way back to the bridge. So do I just... As I played the flute, Snorlax began to wake up. <sighs> Hey, you got any food? What? No. Dang it. <sighs> Bye, friend. Bye, buddy. The Snorlax wandered off in search of food, but with him out of the way, I saw that far beyond and across the bridge was the next Firestone. Perfect. On days 22 to 26, I ran towards the stone and was just about to pick it up when suddenly, prepare for trouble. Make it double. Team Rocket, what are you two doing here? We came for the sweet taste of revenge. Go, Weezing! Oh no! We began to fight, but Weezing's attacks were no joke. He would use poison type attacks to knock down my heart. Yeah! I fired back with Ember and my other attacks, and they were starting to hurt him badly when. Not so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse shot at me with some sort of web-like net. Hey, not fair. Weezing shot out a large ball of pure poison that hit me head on. This caused me to be extremely low on heart. What do I do? But before I even had a chance to think, a Pokeball started to fly right towards me. No! That Charmeleon really thinks he can get away and stop me? Hey, you! Get back to work! Rawr! I may be the strongest Gyarados now, but it's not enough! Once this machine is complete, I will be unstoppable! On days 27 to 29, I woke up inside of a strange metallic sphere. No, I'm in a Pokeball. I gotta get out of here. I launched attack after attack at the walls, but nothing was working. Just then, I noticed a very large button. Ha, I blasted it with Dragon's Breath. But still, nothing. Come on, there has to be something. Wait, are those turned off? Batteries? I bet these power up the Pokeball. I focused my Dragon's Breath attack at one of them and unleashed as much as I could, but I missed. Come on, you got this. I blasted the battery again, and this time my attack hit and filled them with power. Yes! After a couple more blasts, I was able to turn on all of the batteries. Because of this, the entire ball began to rumble. Here we go! On days 30 to 32, I escaped from the Pokeball and was now in an unfamiliar dark room. Am I in Team Rocket's base? Yeah, that's right. I looked over and standing inside was a cat Pokemon. Who are you? I'm Yow, the most valued member of Team Rocket. And I'm supposed to be watching you. But how did you get out? Well, actually, what I did was... I zip it. Don't try and charm me. I'll never tell you where we stashed the Firestone. Wait, they brought the Firestone here. That's good to know. <laughs> I should have kept my mouth shut. Eh, the boss is gonna kill me. Sound the alarms! Alarms and lights then started to blast throughout the entire building. I gotta go and find that Firestone. Now, I ran as fast as I could through the halls, going through room after room in Team Rocket's base until finally I found it hidden high up in a tower, the Firestone. I ran up and grabbed it, and this caused me to grow even stronger. I gained five more hearts and fully evolved into Charizard. I even learned a new move, Air Slash. Awesome! Now, to get out of here. On days 33 to 35, I was about to escape from the Team Rocket base when I was cut off by a slender cat Pokemon. Get out of the way! They will do no such thing. I turned around towards the voice and saw a figure approaching me. It was Giovanni, the Team Rocket boss. Why are you trying to capture me? My goals are simple. I am going to build the most powerful organization in the world. And that all starts with the strongest Pokemon like you. That all won't matter if you let Gyarados' plan succeed. Can't you see that? Ha, Gyarados. 
this his mission? He's a maniac. And to think I was once his owner. Wait, you were his trainer? You're the reason he's doing all of this. You were the one who abandoned him. Perhaps, but I never once regretted throwing him back in the ocean because now you will be mine. I turned to see Persian was rushing towards me, and out of pure instinct, I used my new move, Air Slash, to knock them out of the way. Okay, I gotta get out of here. On days 36 to 38, I made it back to my base safely, fully escaping Team Rocket. That was a little too close. I looked over and saw that the professor made it back safely. Ah, Fozo, look at you. You really evolved. And now to build your new lab. I went out and gathered enough materials to build up the professor, his very own Pokemon lab in our base. Ah, perfect. With this up and running, I can continue my research and help you get strong enough to take down Gyarados. Sounds like a plan, Professor. Hey, Fozo. I looked over and coming towards me was Bulbasaur, but he looked extremely weak. Oh my goodness. Hurry, uh, come with me. I led Bulbasaur to the Poke Center and used the machines within it to make him a potion. Well, thanks. I was trying to tell you, I found a trainer who has another Firestone. No way. Were they the ones that hurt you? <laughs> well, I tried to fight him for it, but his Pokemon was way too strong for me. I I'm sorry. I just wanted to help. It's okay. Now, tell me exactly where that trainer is. On days 39 to 40, I was on my way to find the fire type trainer and noticed the area getting hotter. I must be getting close. Just then, I spotted a giant facility ahead of me that had been taken over by a group of water type Pokemon. Flying up above them in the air was Gyarados. I said get my machine up and running now. Wait, he must be talking about Professor Oak's machine. I crept closer as quietly as I could, being careful not to get caught. As I did, I overheard some of Gyarados's army talking. Just one more piece for the machine, huh? Yep, then Gyarados will finally become immune to all types of Pokemon. So, that's his plan. I need to stop him. Where is the Squirtle Squad? Right here, sir. What can we do for you? I have a job for you, Fine. While I'm waiting for this machine to finalize, I need you to make sure that stupid Charizard isn't still out there trying to ruin my plan. Bring him to me alive. Aye, aye. The Squirtle Squad started to leave, and I knew I had to get out of there fast. On days 41 to 44, I ran far away from the water Pokemon until I reached the entrance of a cave where lava was pouring in from everywhere. As I stepped closer, I saw the whole floor of the cave was covered in lava. Great, now what? I then felt a sensation in my newly developed wings. Let's give this a shot. I began to fly high over the pools of lava. Woohoo! Uh, this is awesome! I had to be careful not to hit any of the streams of lava pouring through the cave. I could still get burned. I flew through and under the lava falls, following different paths of the cave until I made it to the other side. There, ahead of me, was a tall battle tower that had to have been hundreds of blocks tall. Oh my! I made my way inside and slowly all the way up to the top until finally I reached the final room where I saw an old man in a lab coat. Hey, um, I'm looking for this really strong fire type trainer. The man then slowly turned around to face me. Well, I don't know anyone else around here besides me, Blaine, the red hot fire type gym leader. You, you're the one who hurt my friend. <laughs> Indeed. Now, why has a Charizard come to my gym anyway? On days 45 to 47, I quickly explained to Blaine how I needed his Firestone. I need it to... Yeah, yeah. I know your little quest and the prophecy. A fire Pokemon whose flame can burn even the fiercest of waves. Yeah, and that's gonna be me. <laughs> Very 
well, if you want it, follow me. I followed him deeply inside of his gym and into his battlefield. The only way I'll give you this stone is if you defeat me in combat. Go Magmar! Blaine threw out a Pokeball. And out came the largest Magmar I had ever seen. Whoa! Have it your way. We began to fight. He would launch powerful fire blast attacks that burned right through me. Yeah! Ha! You think you're gonna be the savior of all the trainers and Pokemon of this world? What a joke! Magmar, finish this! As Magmar was charging up a final attack, I felt rage boiling within me. I will save everyone! Ah! I used my air slash attack harder than I ever thought I could, and it struck Magmar head on. What? I did it! On days 48 to 51, Blaine led me into another room inside of his gym. So, the Firestone is in here? Ah, yes. Not like it's useful anymore anyway. Useless? What do you mean? Take a look for yourself. Blaine pointed over to a pedestal, and sitting on it was the broken shards of a Firestone. No! I ran over and picked them all up, but they were completely shattered. But I, I need to put this back together. How do I do that? I did some research of my own, and let me tell you, ain't nothing but the hottest of flames can forge that thing back together. I need to find out more. Maybe Professor Oak will know. On days 52 to 53, I arrived back at my base with the broken shards of the Firestone. Professor, I need your help. What is it? Let me see. Here, take a look. The trainer said something about the hottest of flames being able to forge it back. Do you know anything about that? Hmm. Hottest of flames forge. Here, let me look. The professor ran to the back of his laboratory and was looking through countless amounts of paper and books until... Aha! Here, the hottest of flames. This book says that you would need a specific item called the fire core, but it seems like an extremely rare find. We have to do whatever it takes to repair it. I left the base, following the directions of Professor Oak, when suddenly... What is this? This is another successful capture by the Squirtle Squad. I looked up and saw coming around the corner was the five Squirtles I saw in Gyarados' outpost. Let me out of here. Sorry, Charizard. Lost his orders. All five of the Squirtles attacked me with water pulse at the same time. Ah! Their attacks were so strong that I felt myself grow weaker and weaker until I passed out. On days 54 to 56, I woke up inside of a much larger water prison. Ah, my head. A whole lot more than your head is going to be hurting when the boss gets here. Ah, and here he Cubs. I looked across the room, and approaching my cell was none other than Gyarados. So, you really did capture the Charizard? Good work. Yes, sir, we did. Now, about the payment we agreed on. <laughs> payment? I will repay your work by not wasting my time on you. The five Squirtles came together and stood against him. Hey, th this, th this isn't fair. I... Don't care! Gyarados released his Hyper Beam attack directly onto the Squirtle Squad. Wait! When the dust settled, there was only one of them left. <sighs> now, leave before I waste more of my moves on you. The last Squirtle ran out of the room. You are a monster! Look, I know about your trainer, Giovanni. I know that he abandoned you, and I'm sorry, but it doesn't give you the right to treat others this way. Shut up! You have no idea what it's like to be treated like garbage! I'll show you what it feels like to be nothing! Gyarados was about to unleash another attack at me. Oh, no! Suddenly, one of the walls in the room exploded with electric energy, and appearing in the newly formed hole was Pikachu. Leave him alone! On days 57 to 59, Pikachu and Gyarados began a fight in an intense battle. Pikachu would use their speed to bounce around the room and attack Gyarados with powerful electric-type attacks. This is for taking action! from me. Thunderball! 
out! Yeah! Pikachu's attacks were holding him at bay. I used Fire Fang to burn the cage and break my way out. Bozo, get out of here now! What? I can't just leave you! Gyarados, continue to attack! No, Bozo, he is too strong! Go and save Ash! Save everyone! He continued to hit at Gyarados with lightning, but now Gyarados seemed like he was barely taking any damage. Ha! You used to be so much more powerful, Pikachu, but now you've lost! With one final blow, Gyarados' Hyper Beam caused Pikachu to faint! No! I took this opportunity to fly straight out of the hole in the wall. Run while you still can, Charizard. Soon, no one will be able to stop me. On days 60 to 63, I flew out into the world in search of the fire core. I have to fix this firestone so I can avenge Pikachu and stop Gyarados. I flew and flew until I found the forge that Professor Oak must have been talking about. It had tall, huge doors that led into its interior. Huh, I wonder where that fire core is. There, across from me on the other side of the room was the fire core floating over over a small pool of lava. Sweet! I started to run over and grab it, but when I got close, it fell into the lava. And then, bursting out of it, was the forge's guardian. Whoa! Those who come to claim the hottest of flames must prove themselves worthy! It began to attack me without any remorse, and its hits were so strong. I tried to use my flight to my advantage and flew around the room, attacking from range. My dragon's breath attack was hurting him the most, so I just kept firing. I am worthy of the power of the hottest flames. Yeah! <laughs> And with that, the guardian shrunk back down into the pool of lava and offered to me the fire core. You have been deemed worthy, Fozo, the Grand Charizard. Yes! On days 64 to 65, I brought the fire core back to the professor at our base. Ah, just what we needed. The machine should be ready to go. Professor Oak led me to where he had been building his own fire forge machine. And now? I threw the shards onto the forge, and everything started to glow brighter. Now hurry! Use dragon's breath! I used my dragon's breath directly onto the stone, hotter than I ever had before, until the firestone forged back together. We did it! I picked up the stone and felt myself beginning to evolve into Mega Charizard Y. This caused me to gain five more hearts, and I learned a new attack, Flamethrower. This is awesome! Yeah, but you're still not strong enough yet. I turned around to see that the last Squirtle Squad member was standing behind us. Hey! Okay, okay, okay. Just don't freak out. Why are you here? Oh, that evil Gyarados. He faded my friends. I realize now that I was on the wrong side. What he's doing is... It's just not right. How do I know that I can trust you? Because I know exactly where the final firestone is. And I will help you get there. The Squirtle jumped up and started to walk away from our base. I guess I don't have a choice. I followed him until we reached a clearing, revealing a tundra far off in the distance. The water Pokemon hit the stone in the tundra on its highest mountain, so the fire Pokemon wouldn't even think to check there. Wow, thanks, Squirtle. Hey, feel free to stay at our base for protection, okay? Now, it's time I find that final Firestone. On days 69 to 74, I was flying through the tundra, searching for the highest mountain. Come on, it has to be here somewhere. It then started to snow very heavily, and my wings weren't used to it at all. I have to keep searching. Help, someone, please. What was that? I flew over, only to see a small little Torchic standing on a cliffside. The snowstorm was very bad, and it had nowhere to go. Oh no! Hey, don't worry, you'll be fine. I quickly flew it to the other side of the valley, into a cave, and used Flamethrower to light up the area and provide him some warmth. That feels so much better. Why are you out here in the middle of the tundra? It's too cold for you. I was forced here. 
us fire Pokemon are starting to run out of places to go with Gyarados out and about. Yeah, no kidding. Any chance you've seen a mountain anywhere near here? Oh, definitely. There's one just north of here. Perfect. Just stay here where it's warm. Thanks. On day 75 to 80, I followed the Torchic's directions and finally found it. The largest mountain in the tundra. Sweet. I flew up until reaching the top. I found there an icy cave and entered, only to see sitting inside of it was the final Firestone. Bingo! I ran up, trying to pick it up, but was knocked back by a powerful ice ability. Ah! Who did that? I looked forward, only to see a Dragonite was there, guarding the stone. Hey, I need that! Not if I have anything to say about it! Dragonite charged forward, and we clashed in a large battle. He shot out powerful ice attacks at me, and I retaliated with fire. I could tell that my hits on him were very effective, but he didn't give up too easily. Stop this! I'm trying to get the stone so I can help all Pokemon, including you. Dragonite then hit me very hard, knocking me back. Ouch! I am forced to guard this stone. Gyarados has my trainer, Lance. I am only working for him to keep him safe. Look, you can't trust him. I think both of us know that. But maybe I have an idea. What if I save your trainer? Yeah, right. I'm serious. If I bring him back to you, can I have that Firestone? The Dragonite was thinking. You know what? You have yourself a deal. On days 81 to 85, I arrived at Gyarados' empire and quickly noticed just how much it had transformed. There were new buildings everywhere, and even more trainers were throughout inside their own cells. I have to find Lance, and quick! I started to sneak my way through, searching cage after cage. Then, a large machine caught my eye, the one that Gyarados was building all along. Yes! It's finished! Oh no! He then flew over and hovered over the center. The machine turned on, causing the water to activate. Gyarados from here then began to grow larger in size, and everything around us began to storm. This isn't good. I am now truly the strongest of Pokemon. No one can take me down now. My attention then got taken away by a sick trainer inside the nearest cage. Wait, are you Lance? <laughs> Yeah, I am. And standing right next to him was Ash, Pikachu's trainer. You're that Charizard everyone's been talking about. It's not safe here. I know, but I'm breaking you two out right away. Let's go. I'll explain while we're on the way. On days 86 to 90, I brought Lance and Ash back with me high up on the Tundra Mountain. Lance! Dragonite! The two ran up to each other and reunited. They're so happy now. And to think Gyarados wants to take this away from everyone. He truly is evil. Pikachu, he would be so happy to know that you're safe now. Gyarados, he fainted him. Well, now that you have me, we can heal him and bring him back together. I was happy to hear that. And from there, I went over to collect the final Firestone. I picked it up, causing me to change one final time. I gained 10 more hearts and grew a lot larger in size, fully evolving into Mega Charizard X. I ran outside and tested my new move, Draco Meteor. I feel so strong. Do be careful, Charizard. Gyarados is way stronger than he was before. This is still a very dangerous battle. I know, but I have to try and win. On days 91 to 94, I brought Ash with me back home to base. This place is perfect. We went over to the Pokemon Center, and he put a Pokeball inside the healing station. Give it some time. I never had to heal Pikachu before. It may take a while. I walked out and noticed that Squirtle still didn't have a home. Let's change that. I got enough materials to make Squirtle his very own water-themed house. Even water Pokemon can be our friends. 
sense. Oh, gee, thanks. Of course, it's time. Ash then threw out a Pokeball and from it emerged out Pikachu. You're back. Oh my Ash, you guys saved me. I'm so happy to be out of that Pokeball. I'm just happy you're okay. This is why the other trainers need to be freed. Once we are, we can heal all our Pokemon that have been fainted. Well then, I think it's time that we stop Gyarados for good. On days 95 to 99, Pikachu, Ash, and I started to make our way back towards Gyarados' castle. And just when his base was coming into sight, Gyarados came flying up above it all. Go, you worthless water Pokemon, and stop them! The water-type army started to flood out of the gates of the castle and run out into the area. I've been itching for a fight since we got out. Let's do this. I began to fly and fired down flamethrower on the water types. And I can tell that my fire was so much hotter than before. It was actually hurting the water Pokemons. No way. Ah, it burns. Pikachu, use thunder. Pikachu. Pikachu's attacks caused a ton of the water types to faint in one blow. But more and more of the water Pokemon started to rush in. Oh no! Go! Take on Gyarados now! We got this from here! I'm on it! I flew above the battlefield, right towards the castle. On day 100, I made my way to the top of Gyarados' castle. And there, flying at the center of it all, was Gyarados. I'll give you one more chance. It's over. No, the world will finally see me. I won't let you take this from me. We began to clash as Gyarados attacked me with Hydro Pump over and over again. He was clearly stronger than before, but I wasn't going to give up. I flew around and kept trying to burn him with my new fire attacks. Hey yeah! But he charged up other powerful attacks and started to destroy almost everything around him. Ah! His attack knocked me back down to the ground. Did you really think you would be the fire type of the prophecy? The one that would burn away the fiercest of waves? Ha! I'll show you what real power looks like. Gyarados began to charge his final move and was going to fire it directly onto me. I won't lose. I used my new move, Draco Meteor, and it crashed right onto Gyarados. This knocked him back, where I flew face to face with him like my brother did all of those days ago. Time to end this. I used Flamethrower with all of the power within me, and it felt like every Firestone I had gathered along the way empowered me. Uh, yeah! With that, all of my flames completely fainted Gyarados, and the world of Pokemon could now live in peace. On day one, I spawned in as Baby Sonic. I used my super speed and began running throughout my home until I came to a complete stop by none other than my friend, Knuckles. Sonic, it's good that you're here. We need to move now. I heard explosions sounding off nearby my island. Knuckles brought me over to a clearing, revealing a massive army of robots turning my land into ice. No, my home. Dr. Eggman's army. They found us. Knuckles left and I followed. It wasn't long until we reached a temple holding a strange looking fire emerald. Whoa, what's this? Without answering me, Knuckles hit me into it, causing me to absorb the emerald. My body began to change, turning my once blue fur into fire. Whoa, I'm Fire Sonic. All of your questions will be answered. First, we need to leave before... Knuckles then got interrupted by a large explosion, revealing none other than Dr. Eggman himself. Well, if it isn't Sonic, I see you collected a fire emerald. <laughs> no worries. I'll just get rid of you so that I can fully ice over this world. What? Just then, Dr. Eggman blasted Knuckles with his giant mech suit. Get out of here. Now. I ran as fast as I could with Dr. Eggman's mech suit chasing right behind me. On day two, Dr. Eggman was gaining on me. But thanks to my new fiery skin, I was running even faster than before. Woo! I 
think I'm gonna lose him. Unfortunately, I was stopped by a very large cliffside. Oh no. <laughs> Once my vision is complete, no one will be able to stop me. Wait! Eggman then hit me with this mech machine, causing me to fall off of the cliff. <laughs> On day three, I was falling through the sky uncontrollably. Ah, what do I do? Just as I thought all hope was lost, I got caught by a plane? Wait, is that? Hey, Sonic, hang on! Tails, we were flying through the sky, but sadly, the plane couldn't support both of our weight. Is it supposed to make that beeping noise? No, brace yourself! Ah! Tails, where are you? I looked up and saw him hovering through the sky, landing safely. Hey, must be nice. At least we are okay, Sonic. It looks like you've gotten with the fire emeralds. You will need all six of them to stop Eggman. I know. He's trying to ice over this world, but why? I have no idea. We need to get to the bottom of it and stop him. Maybe the rest of the fire emeralds are the key. My thought then got interrupted by a loud crash on the horizon. What was that? Tails and I went to look, and sure enough, it was a group of Eggman's robots roaming around the area. Oh no. On day four, Eggman's robots clashed with Tails and I. How is he still alive? I tried my best to fight back, but sadly, I wasn't putting up a fight at all. Sonic, the fire emeralds, they can give you great abilities. Focus on your fire. Right. I listened to Tails, and out of my pure concentration, I was able to punch the robots with an incredibly strong fire punch. Awesome. I fought the remaining few and was able to take them down. Unfortunately, though, the last one started to run away. I must tell the others. Oh, no, you don't. I chased after it and successfully took it down at a clearing. I then noticed that he dropped a tracker that could lead me straight to the next fire emerald. Well, that's great, but before that, we must fortify so that we can remain safe, Sonic. Yeah, I think I have an idea. On day five, I went to work. I went out and got enough materials to make myself a set of stone tools. From there, Tails and I worked together by each building up our very own homes. I built up a sweet fire Sonic themed house. And from the looks of things, Tails was building up his very own workshop. Whoa. With this build up and running, I'll make some really sweet gadgets in no time. I can't wait. It's important you find the other fire emeralds in time so that we can stop Eggman. From what I've heard, he's building up some crazy machines to freeze everything over. Agreed. From there, I looked at the tracker. I think it's time I go out and get that second fire emerald. On day six, I ran far throughout the terrain, following the tracker, until I finally arrived to the green hill zone? The second emerald is here? From the looks of things, there were more of Eggman's robots surveying the area. I bet they're looking for it too. I did my best sneaking by them and avoiding their detection. I can't be caught. So, do you really think Dr. Eggman is gonna pull this off? Hopefully. Once this world is iced over, everyone will be forced to depend and take orders from him. As I finished eavesdropping, I turned and far off on the other end of the area, live the green fire emerald. It was surrounded by a large drop. How am I supposed to get past that? On day seven, I had an idea. I used my fire speed and ran throughout the Green Hill Zone course. I knew if I wanted to make that large jump, I had to be fast enough. I did everything I could running through the path, knocking over Eggman's robots. Ha! Take this! After my speed built up more and more, I reached the cliff, but thankfully was able to jump high enough. I did it! I went over and picked up the second fire emerald. Because of this, my body began to change. I grew larger in size and now had crazy fire shoots that allowed me to leap high up in the air whenever I wanted. Awesome! On day eight, I was leaving the area with my new upgrade until out of nowhere, a strange looking robot dropped down in front of me. Wait a minute, are you? I am Metal Sonic, a creation of Eggman to take you 
down. We already have Knuckles, and it won't be long until we have the rest of your friends, too. No! Metal Sonic began a blast at me! Ah! He had very powerful blasters and gadgets to his disposal. I did my best to counter with my abilities, but sadly, he was just way too strong for me. I can't beat him! Knowing I had no other choice, I started to run, but the Metal Sonic began flying right behind me! Get back here! Boosters deactivated. Power low. Ah! I ran faster until I was cut off by a large, rocky wall. Oh no! Knowing I had to think fast, I used my newly acquired ability and leapt high up into the air, making it on top of the mountain wall. Okay, time to get out of here. On days 9 to 10, I made it back to base, barely. I need to update Tails. I went over to him, but I noticed that he wasn't alone. Hey, Who's this? I see you found the emerald, Sonic. Oh, and this is Chow. He's run into quite a problem. Follow me. We followed the little guy until we were met with a Chow village, but it was completely frozen over. Oh my goodness. Eggman's robots, they did this. They froze my people, my family. I was the only one who made it out alive. This is terrible. I have to save Knuckles and stop this whole operation. You know, if you help him freeze my people, my pops knows a lot about these robots. Maybe he can help you find your friend. You know what? You have yourself a deal, but how am I going to unfreeze this entire place? On days 11 to 12, I began a search throughout the Chow Village. It didn't take long until I found an ice tunnel that led straight below it. It's worth checking out. I went throughout the tunnels until I came into a large frozen cavern with a huge mass of ice at its center. That's what's keeping the village frozen. I began to chip away at the ice core with my fire punches, but out of nowhere, the core began to shoot ice back at me. Ah! I began to circle around the cavern, slamming into the core with fire and outrunning its attacks. Then when it was getting weak, the core started to make a blizzard storm throughout the whole cave. It was no match for my fire, and with the final fire leap, I was able to melt it down completely. Take that! Because of this, the cave around me started to turn back to normal, and I heard shouting coming from outside. Yeah, he did it! Sonic did it! Yeah, he saved us! I left, only to see the village was completely thawed out, and the Chow people were free and happy again. Thank you! Yes, Thank you so much. Also, my son here told me that you're looking for the robots that did this. I think I know exactly where you can find them. On days 13 to 14, Tails and I were driving off throughout the land in his brand new van. Whoa, this thing is awesome, Tails. Thanks. Oh, look, the lab Chow told us about. I looked out over the horizon to see a tall, icy mountain, and at its peak was Eggman's high-tech laboratory. He has to be there. Using the van satellite, we then heard talking coming from Dr. Eggman and Metal Sonic way up on the roof. He's what? There's no way that stupid hedgehog is still alive. This is outrageous. Forgive me, doctor. What should we do next? We? We? Dr. Eggman punched Metal Sonic back towards the edge of the building. I'm going to continue to build my machine that will bring about an entire ice age to this world. Then I'll be the only one to provide warmth to its people. And you are going to watch over the yellow fire emerald in the vault room. Make sure that no one, especially that pincushion, ruins my plans. Yes, sir, Eggman. It's Dr. Eggman to you. Wow, someone needs some reprogramming. Eggman and Metal Sonic then disappeared back into the laboratory. Sonic, did you hear that? Yeah, I need to get in there, save Knuckles, and get the Yellow Fire Emerald fast. On days 15 to 16, Tails got close enough to the lab for me to enter inside. You go in. I'll keep watch out here. Good luck. Thanks. It didn't take long until I reached a room full of computers and monitors. Hey, give me a coffee, will you? 
would you? I gotta keep an eye on this red guy. All right, all right. As one of the robots left, I saw that the other one was looking at a screen that showed Knuckles in a cage. There you are. But how do I not get caught? I snuck away from the remaining guards and entered a hallway that led to my friend. He looked so weak and frustrated. Psst, Knuckles! Sonic, you're here? Yeah, I want to get you out, but if they see me on that camera, we're done for. Your speed, use it. What? Rely on your fire. Become so fast, they won't even see you in the camera. My speed, focus. Here goes nothing. I focus on the fire powers inside of me and sprung forward in a flash. I appeared on the other side of the room as I pulled Knuckles out of the cage. Whoa, I did it. I actually did it. Here you go, one copy. Thank you, whoa, did you see that? What? Man, you're seeing things. Just drink your coffee. It'll wake you up. On days 17 to 18, I was going deeper within their facility. What are we doing? We can't just leave yet, Knuckles. They have the fire emerald here. I heard it's in some sort of vault room. Uh-oh. That's the highest secured place here. Well, it's worth a try. The two of us ran down a few more hallways until we found the room. And there in the center was the yellow fire emerald. Bingo. We began to move into the vault room when suddenly its door slammed shut behind us. Uh-oh. Metal Sonic then flew in and landed in between us and the fire emerald. You should have listened to your friend, Sonic. Now you will both. Die. He started to blast away, shooting at me and Knuckles constantly. Ah! The two of us knew that we had to stop him. We can't give up now. Metal Sonic started to fly up, focusing his attacks on Knuckles. Oh, no, you don't. I used my Fire Leap ability and slammed right into him. Ah! No, 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 no. He fell to the ground, and Knuckles rushed up and unleashed a flurry of punches. With one fire punch, Metal Sonic was down for the count. We did it. With my victory, I went up and grabbed the yellow fire emerald. Because of this, I felt even more fire energy surrounding me. I gained five more hearts. And now I could create shield orbs of pure fire around me. My celebration was cut short because the vault doors burst open, revealing none other than Dr. Eggman himself. On days 19 to 20, I was face to face with Dr. Eggman. All right, no more fun and games, Sonic. Hand the emerald back over, and I'll think about not killing you. I know what you're planning to do. Freezing over the entire world? Why? Why? Do you have any idea what it's like to be seen as a joke? Seen as someone who tries and tries, but never succeeds? Well... When this ice takes over the world, I'll be the only person to supply it with the heat that they so desperately need. Then, everyone will need me. I'll be the strongest person in the world. Eggman fired off a powerful missile attack. Oh no, I thought I was done for. But out of instinct, I used my new fire shield ability, blocking the explosion. I will not let you get away with this. Enough! Eggman shot one more explosion, creating a large hole right underneath us. Curses! Ah! I'll find you again, Sonic. But you, I can't believe they just broke you down with the food between their teeth have to make you into better, stronger robots. On days 21 to 23, Knuckles and I ventured throughout the underground tunnels until we found an exit far off away from the facility. Sonic, Knuckles, you guys are all right. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, we are. It was a mission success, Tails. From there, the three of us made it back to our base. I knew that we had to build Knuckles a home, so I was about to go gather supplies from a nearby cave, but he stopped me. Huh, allow me. Knuckles went and started mining with his bare fists, destroying chunk after chunk. Awesome! Together, me and Knuckles built him up a home to stay in. And done! I hope you like it, pal. Thanks again for everything. While I was mining, I was able to find this as well. Knuckles threw over a ton of iron for me to have. Sweet! With it, I was able to upgrade my tools into iron ones. Thanks, man! Don't mention it, but uh, while I was mining down there, I broke through a wall and found some 
weird purple colored flames. Purple flames, huh? I'll go check it out. On days 24 to 26, I headed down into the caves underneath our base. After a little while, I stumbled across the purple fire that Knuckles was talking about. Huh, that's weird. I followed the flames, which led me to a large room filled with purple light as a massive pool of purple lava separated me from a large door. Wait a minute, the purple fire emerald, could it be here? I started to look around and noticed that three different jump pads were inside of the room. And are those rings? Huh. I trusted my instincts and jumped on one of the pads straight through a golden ring. This caused it to glow up. Awesome! I did it to the remaining two, which caused the main entryway to open. I looked over, and inside of the newly opened room lied the purple emerald. Let's go! On days 27 to 29, I walked through the open doorway to approach the next fire emerald, when suddenly, something started to come up from the ground in front of me. Before me was a large green pipe, and out of it jumped a plumber in red clothes? Wait, Mario? He jumped up and grabbed the purple fire emerald from its pedestal. As he did, his clothes changed colors, turning him into fire Mario. Let's go! Ah, hello, Fire Sonic. What are you doing here? That's mine. Yours? No way. I found it first. What? No, you don't understand. No, you don't. I need this for myself. So long. No. Mario leapt back into the green pipe. I can't let him get away. I jumped in, following him right behind. Here goes nothing. <laughs> Finally, Sonic won't stand a chance. My beautiful creation is finally complete. And with this final piece, he will be perfect. Now, let's place it inside and let's turn this puppy back on. On days 30 to 32, I jumped out of the green pipe following Mario. And as I looked up, I saw we were in a land frozen over ice. It seemed completely empty. Is this place? Yes, it was my mushroom kingdom. That cruel Dr. Eggman tested his icy creations on it. And now everything is gone. That is why I need the fire emerald. Mario, if you just give me the purple emerald, I'll be one step closer to being able to defeat him. No, in fact, I think I should have all of the fire emeralds. What? How about this? If you defeat me in a challenge, you can have the purple fire emerald. But if I win, you have to give me all of yours. I'll beat you anytime, any place. On days 33 to 35, Mario brought me over to a massive track surrounding a frozen mountain. On it were two race cars lined up. Oh yeah, my challenge is a race around this large icy volcano. Wait, volcano? Oh yeah, and we start as soon as it... Suddenly, the frozen volcano started to erupt, launching massive blocks of ice into the sky. Let's go! Mario sped off in his cart, getting a head start. Hey! I jumped in and sped off behind him. He was far ahead, and massive blocks of ice were raining down onto us. Mamma mia, here you go. Mario launched fireballs attacking at me from his cart. Hey, stop that. We both started to turn the final corner and there was the finish line. As he was distracted, a large block of ice crashed down onto him. No! Because of this, I cruised through the finish line, winning the race. Yes, that was not Mamma Mia. <laughs> But a win is a win, Sonic. Here you go. Mario threw over the purple fire emerald to me, and I picked it up. This caused me to gain five more hearts, and now I can summon large fire rocks from the sky. This is sick. 
I looked back at Mario, and he looked sad and defeated. I knew deep down, all he was trying to do was save the Mushroom Kingdom. Hey, Mario, I have an idea. On days 36 to 38, I traveled back with Mario to the frozen Mushroom Kingdom. I then used all of my fire energy in my legs to start running around as fast as I could. A ring of fire then started to form, causing the entire kingdom to melt back to what it once was. Woohoo! Thank you so much, Sonic! I know we have our differences, but it is important you take down that evil Eggman! Trust me, I will. I kept running, using my speed to race back home. But unfortunately for me, a large fiery explosion knocked me aside. Ow! Celebrating a little early now, are we? I looked up and saw that Metal Sonic was standing directly in front of me. He clearly had some new upgrades and looked much stronger than before. What happened to you? That doesn't matter. You should be worried about what's about to happen to you. Metal Sonic rushed in and immediately started to hit me with fire. Ah! I jumped up and slammed into him with my fire leap. But he seemed unfazed. Poor little Sonic. Suddenly, in a burst of speed, Metal Sonic jumped up in the air and slammed down on top of me. I thought I was surely done for. No, I can't die here. Out of nowhere, he was hit from a side by a powerful attack that stunned him. What the? I looked over and saw my fellow hedgehog, Shadow, standing there. Hurry and get up, Sonic. We don't have much time until he recovers. Shadow? You're here too? I said get up and let's go. On days 39 to 41, I escaped with Shadow, making it back to my base. Okay, why are you here and why did you save me? This isn't about you, Sonic. This is about saving the world. Eggman's experiments, his inventions, they're roaming all over the place, destroying everything, trying to start that new Ice Age of his. He needs to be stopped. Yeah, no kidding. <sighs> There's a reason you weren't able to stop Robot Sonic just now. He's empowered by something. The next Fire Emerald. That's why he had fire attacks as well. What should we do? Sonic, I was overhearing your conversation, and I think I can make you something that could take Metal Sonic down. Awesome. Yeah, so make it. Well, that's just the thing. I seem to have misplaced the item I need. It's called the solar shell. It's the only thing that could withstand your firepower, Sonic. Uh, what is it, Shadow? It's just, I think I know who has one. You do? Yeah, an old friend of mine. Follow me. On days 42 to 44, I followed Shadow into a dark wood forest. Hey, I don't like this. Come on, she won't hurt you. Yoo-hoo! What was that? I looked up, frightened only to see Rouge the Bat was perched up on a darkwood tree. So, what is it that you want? We're here for a specific item I heard you might have, the solar shell. Ah, uh, yes. Well, let's see. I have something you want. How about you get me something I want? And what's that? Well, you see, just outside this forest is an operation site of Eggman's robots, and I saw one of them had a pretty, not so little, golden ring. If you go and get that ring for me, then I shall exchange it for your solar shell. Ugh, fine. One golden ring coming right up. On days 45 to 47, we left Rouge's Darkwood Forest and saw Eggman's operation site not too far off. As we moved closer, I noticed that the place was crawling with a bunch of robots. If we're caught, the whole site would be on us. As we started to creep around the base, I started to hear a voice shouting in the distance. What did I tell you about insubordination? Oh no, Eggman's here? Sonic, look. I looked over and saw Eggman in a courtyard. We're going as fast as we can, Doctor. We'll go faster. If we don't get everything ready and complete the airship before that hedgehog gets stronger, then I'll dismantle you all by hand myself. An airship? What is he planning? All of the robots scattered around the operation site, and Dr. Eggman left. 
Sonic, we have to get the ring out of here now. I know, I know. There, Shadow and I ran into an opening, and in the middle of it was a large golden ring. Bingo! I ran up to grab it, but as soon as I did, an alarm started to ring out throughout the entire site. You have got to be kidding me. On days 48 to 52, Shadow and I were surrounded by Eggman's robots. Well, no other way out than to fight, right? Normally, no, but I've been itching for a fight. Ah! Shadow ran into the robot, slashing into them, as I used my fire leap to slam into a group at once. I used my orbs of fire to burn down the last few remaining ones, and Shadow cut down the last robot. Hey, we make a pretty good team, huh? Ugh, whatever. Let's just get out of here before more come. We used our speed to run out of the operation site in a flash and headed back into Rouge's area. Oh, sweet Sonic, you shouldn't have. Rouge flew down from the treetops as I tossed her the ring she asked for. Hey, all in a day's work, right? Now, please give us a solar shell like you promised. Oh, I didn't promise anything, but I'll be nice because you have been so kind, unlike someone else I know. <sighs> this is what I need. Yes. Now, just to give this to Tails. On days 53 to 56, Shadow and I ran as fast as we could back to our base. Here you go, Tails. Now, what are you making? Oh, sweet. And, uh, you'll see soon. Just give me a little more time. I took this time to build up a home for Shadow. I made it match his dark style to thank him for all of his help. Here you go. Thanks, Sonic. I guess. Sonic, it's ready! As I made my way into Tails' workshop, I saw his hard work had not gone to waste as he built me my very own armor. Whoa, this is amazing. It's nothing really, Sonic. It's especially nothing without the proper pilot. Pilot? Yep, hop on in. I walked up and got into the large suit. It's a perfect fit. With this, you can surely take down Metal Sonic. I'll give you some coordinates from here. Time to go find him and get the next Fire Emerald. On days 57 to 59, I was running throughout the world, searching for Metal Sonic. All right, Sonic, the thrusters are working properly. You can hear me too, right? Yes, Tails, coming in loud and clear. Then the system is working perfectly. That robot clone stands no chance. I just got a blip on the radar. Head 300 kilometers north of your current position. All right, on it. I ran over to the location as I started to see a burning village come into my view. Whoa, what happened here? Oh no, the robot, he's back. Everyone run away, save the children. What? No, it's okay. I'm not who you think I am. I'm Stay away from me. Everyone run, I'll distract him. The panicking villagers started to run in a snake-like pattern. Hey, knock it off. I'm trying to help. Just tell me where Metal Sonic went. He wasn't listening, so I walked towards him, causing him to run away in fear. I looked up in the direction he ran and saw a partially destroyed pathway through some nearby trees. He must have gone that way. That's right. You better run, you robotic freak. On day 60 to 62, I ran as fast as I could, following the path of destruction. Just then, I was met with an opening where fire was burning all around the tree lines. And there, standing in the middle of all of it, was Metal Sonic. Hey! Oh, Sonic, if you come back so I can take you down for good to see who the better Sonic really is. What are you even talking about? I was made in every way to copy you and defeat you at your own game. But fail after fail, Eggman has only grown disappointed in me. Well, I will show him he was wrong. Metal Sonic launched forward, coming straight at me with his flaming fists. You will not defeat me today, Sonic. Today I become the only Sonic. His attacks were hurting a lot. Time to see what this suit can do. I shot at Metal Sonic using my new mechanized weaponry. I can tell that this was really starting to damage him. I'm sorry, but you're right. There can only be one Sonic. No, no. He ran forward to hit me one last time, but before he could, I hit him harder than I ever had, causing his defeat. 
from his death, the blue fire emerald was now on the ground. I picked it up, causing me to grow in size. I broke out of Tail's armor with five more hearts, and now I can spin in a wheel of fire. This is amazing. On days 63 to 65, I was on my way back to base when I heard something in the distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll all be boarding the airship soon anyway. Airship? I need to get closer. I looked around the corner to see a massive robot base that was holding Eggman's airship, but it looked like it was still being built. Yeah, this thing will be up and running in only a few days' time. We're going to the Sky Sanctuary first, right? Yeah, now you're catching on, new guy. That's where the doctor says the final fire emerald is. The White Emerald is at a Sky Sanctuary? How am I supposed to get there? Has anybody seen Robot Sonic? He was supposed to be back here by now. I better get out of here and catch up with the others at base fast. On days 66 to 68, I made it safely back to base and headed right for Tails' workshop. I met up with the others and quickly caught them up with what I just heard. The last emerald's at the Sky Sanctuary? Then we will just fly there first. Oh, so you know where it is, Tails? I don't, but maybe we could... It's okay. I think I know what's best. I have to sneak onto that airship before it takes off in a few days. They will take me straight to the Sky Sanctuary. What? Sonic, that's crazy. Yeah, at least let us come with you. No, guys. I'm sorry, but this is the only way. I have to do it alone. <laughs> I walked over to see Shadow standing in the doorway. Going in solo, Sonic? Pretty bold move. I don't need you to ruin the mood, Shadow. I'm just saying, you better be strong enough to face Eggman alone then. Are you sure you're ready for that? I guess I'll just have to find out. On days 69 to 73, I made my way back to Eggman's airship but it seemed like it was about to take off. All of the robots were starting to get on, and I heard Dr. Eggman's voice over a loud speaker. Attention, my creations. Would each and every one of you bucket of bolts make your way onto the airship at once? I saw an opening and started to sprint as fast as I could. Lift off in three, two, one. Ah! Phew, that was close. I looked at my new surroundings and was in some sort of strange storage room. Please tell me none of these machines are randomly just gonna turn on. I started to look around and noticed a much larger mech suit. What is this for? I have to get that white emerald. Only then can I stop this entire operation. On day 74 to 77, I hid in the storage room until I felt the airship come to a screeching halt. Did we make it to the Sky Sanctuary? I looked outside and saw Eggman and his robots going towards a large temple. Whoa, we were on top of a floating island that had white sky hedgehogs everywhere. I will ask you one more time. Where is the emerald? I cannot tell you. My people will die to defend the sanctuary, and you are not worthy! Because of this, Eggman got furious and commanded his robots to attack. I watched as all of them started hurting the hedgehog people. Oh my goodness! You idiots. My creations! Lock every single one of them up and then search everywhere! I'll be looking up there. All of Eggman's robots started to put the white hedgehogs into cages. Oh no, I have to save them. On days 78 to 80, I made it over to the hedgehogs. I can't alert the robots this time. There's too many of them. I did my best to hide from each of them. And when they left their posts, I used my speed to finally reach the cages. Another hedgehog? What are you doing here? I'm here to save you. Just hold on. I used my new wheel of fire ability to cut into the elder's cage. But this alerted the robots. Oh no. Hey, stop them. They started to rush in and attack me. There are too many of them. Suddenly, the elder stepped in between us, blasting them with a large thunderous attack. Now, 
I charged in with all my fire attacks combined. And because of this, they stood no chance. From there, I broke the surrounding cages, letting out more of the sky hedgehogs. Great job, hedgehog. You have saved our people, and I think I know why you are here. The elder then led me to the temple stairway. A sacred fire emerald resides in that temple. Now go and stop Dr. Eggman. On days 81 to 85, I ran up the stairs towards the Sky Sanctuary, taking out as many of Eggman's robots as I could. Take this! I reached the front of the Sky Temple, slowly making my way through the entrance. Eggman has to be inside of here somewhere. I have to be careful. After a while, I made it to a large balcony hanging over the clouds. Sitting there on a pedestal was the huge white fire emerald. Yes, I made it here first. On days 86 to 90, I was just about to grab the final emerald. With this, I can stop Eggman. But out of nowhere, Eggman dropped down right in front of me. Oh no. <laughs> you dumb little hedgehog. He turned around and grabbed the emerald. No! Dr. Eggman then turned towards me. And with the new power of the emerald, he blasted me with very powerful flames. Gah! I was low on hearts. The last fire emerald was much stronger than mine. I couldn't take him down. Not alone. You were too late, Sonic. Far, far too late. Even with the last fire emerald, my plans are already in motion. My creations will freeze this world and bring about the beautiful Ice Age where I'm its sole provider. And that means I must rid this world of people like you. No, wait! Hey, Suddenly, Sonic! I heard a familiar voice in the air around us. Is that? An explosion took place on the wall. And standing there were my friends, Tails and Knuckles. You guys are here! Eggman was distracted, allowing Tails to hit the <gasps> emerald right out of his hands. Ah, no! No! Hurry, Sonic! That was our chance! I grabbed the final fire emerald, causing me to explode in a bright light. I gained 10 more hearts and transformed into fire supersonic. I can now fly, and my body felt so powerful. Ha! It's over, Eggman! Both Tails and Knuckles were at my side as we were face to face with him. Oh, I see. You think because of this minor mishap that I'm still a failure. No, 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 no. I will not be a failure again. This is not a failed experiment. This is a learning experience. Yes. Now, plan B. Plan B? Eggman turned around and jumped off the Sky Sanctuary. Wait! I ran to the edge and looked over, only to see that he landed on his airship. And it started to take off. <laughs> now this world will know what my creations can really do. Ice the world! Sonic, how are we gonna stop him? It's okay, Tails. I can handle it from here. I took off into the sky, heading straight towards Eggman's airship. Good luck. On days 95 to 99, I was flying as fast as I could in my new form. His ship was then beginning to drop massive shards of ice throughout the world. Hit by hit, the terrain below started to freeze over. Oh no, I gotta end this fast. Oh no, incoming up the port side. I landed on the airship and was now face to face with all of the remaining robots. Where is he? Attack! The robots all rushed in and started to attack. Thankfully, now that I was fully upgraded, they didn't stand a chance. I flew overhead and shot down at them with my new fire attacks, taking down each of them one by one almost instantly. And take this. With one final attack, the last one was down. But just then, the large mech that I saw before appeared in front of me. Looking for me? On day 100, I was face to face with Dr. Eggman. Whoa, it seems like you found yourself some upgrades. Yes, yes I have. I will not let you take this arrow away from me. Eggman then started to launch a bunch of rockets at me. But thankfully, I flew out of the way, watching as his attack started to destroy his own ship. I jumped towards Eggman with my fire leap, slamming into him. And I started to cut into him with my wheel of fire. Ha! 
Eggman stomped into the ground with such force that I flung backwards. <laughs> I cannot stand you, Sonic. You have been there to foil my every plan. I saw what you did to Robot Sonic, and I'm going to do the same to you. Out of nowhere, his mech suit then started to make a blizzard of ice form around us. I will succeed. No, I won't let you. We both charged towards each other, trading punches and blows as ice and fire was flying everywhere. I flew up, then came crashing down once again. No! No! Then, with one final attack, I was able to take down Eggman for good. And with that, my friends and the people of this world were finally safe again. On day one, I spawned in as a baby lion. In front of me was my fierce father, the almighty Fire Lion. Son, we are in big trouble. I looked around and noticed that we were inside of a caged entry. Dad, where are we? Just then, the cage slowly opened. We walked out only to see we were inside of a large gladiator arena with a huge crowd watching over us. The Fire Lion, welcome. You have something that I want, something that I need, and I, Invictus, will take it! Just then, I noticed a fire amulet that was tied around my father's neck. Without hesitation, my father took the amulet off and threw it over to me. This caused both of us to transform. I was now a baby fire lion with five fire hearts, and my dad was just a regular lion? Dad, what just happened? Son, this amulet grants the holder the essence of the flame. You must protect it with your life. Invictus saw this and started to charge forward. Escape now. I'll hold him off. No, dad. But before I could finish my sentence, my dad ran forward and started to fight off Invictus. His attacks were very strong. And with one ground slam, he took out my dad. No! I knew that I had to run. But as I was, I accidentally ran over wooden trap doors that burnt away. Ah! He must not get away! On day two, I fell down a dark, scary hole. Ah! I heard heavy breathing throughout it and knew that I wasn't alone. Uh, who's there? Just then, a monster slowly emerged from the shadows. Oh no. It charged in and started to attack me. Ah! Thankfully, since it had long legs, I was able to temporarily hide underneath it, confusing it. Think, come on. Think. Just then, I noticed a passageway in the room. I guess that's my only option. I ran through it, re-alerting the beast. It was chasing behind me, catching up by the second. Oh no, it's a dead end. I turned around and watched as the monster slowly made its way towards me. I'm done for. As I was losing all of my hope, a brave magma giraffe emerged from the lava pool. Uh, who are you? No time. Come with me now. Do you want me to jump in the lava? Oh no, here goes nothing. I jumped inside and to my surprise, I wasn't dying. Sweet. Now, follow me. You have a lot to learn. The magma giraffe and I emerged from the lava outside. I looked around and noticed that we were inside of a nethery looking Sahara. Whoa. I also noticed my fire hearts were low and I was so hungry. Yeah, take this. The giraffe threw me over some fire fruits. I ate them, which caused my health to instantly heal. Whoa, fire heals me now. Correct, Fozo. With that amulet you hold around Around your neck, you have no idea how strong you can get. My name's Jenga. I used to be best friends with your father. So you're saying I can become stronger, but how? Oh, young one, why tell you when I can show you? Follow me. On day four, I was brought over to a cliffside. I looked down the valley and can see it held a gravesite of some sorts. What is this place? Just then, I was punched down by Jenga. Ah! What the heck? I heard growling and coyotes emerged from behind the tombstones. Oh, is this a little snack we see? Uh, let me back up, uh, please. 
These coyotes are not welcome here. Fight them. Use the amulet. The coyotes charged in and started to attack me. I slashed at them using more energy than I ever had, which caused fire to emerge from my paws. Whoa. I have a fire slash? I kept using it, which caused the coyotes to flee from the gravesite. We will be back. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Because of my victory, a large rumble surrounded the area. What's happening? A fire jaguar spirit then emerged from the largest tombstone there. Who are you? You have brought peace to my grave. And for that, I owe you this. My amulet on my body began to transform. I was able to grow out my very own lion mane. I gained five more hearts and also noticed I had a new ability. I wonder what this could do. Thank you, Pozo. So every time my amulet upgrades, so do I? Precisely, Pozo. This jaguar spirit was the first of five animal spirits that guard the savannah. Each one you help will make your fire amulet stronger. Then I will do whatever I can to help all five so that I can be strong enough to take down that gladiator. Where do I begin? On day five, Jenga and I made our way back to the nether hill. I think this is the perfect place for our new animal kingdom. I went out and gathered enough materials to make myself a set of stone tools. From there, I built up a nice fire-themed lion den. While I was doing this, Jenga built himself a long house. I have a long neck, Fozo. Hey, I'm not judging. From there, I designated an area for each spirit I set to rest. The jaguar one is done. Now, four more to go. I wonder what type of spirits the next ones are. If your father was still here, he'd be so proud of you. He believed that as the holder of that amulet, it brought the responsibility of protecting this climate and all the animals within it. Well, I'll make sure that his belief lives on. <laughs> what was that? I ran over, only to see a small baby zebra being chased by a couple of the gladiator's men. Oh no, I have to help. On day six, I chased after the gladiators. Jeez, these guys are fast. They were able to corner the little baby zebra into a dead end. Please, don't hurt me. <laughs> Shut up. No, I rushed in and jumped in between the both of them. Stay back. The gladiators were all surprised to see me and began to attack me. They had strong swords made out of a rare metal, which did a lot of damage. I knew that I had to fight back. I guess it's time to test out my new ability. I used it, which shot out fire blasts wherever I aimed. Awesome! The two gladiators were tough, but thanks to my new upgrade, they didn't stand a chance. That takes care of them. You didn't have to help me, but you did. Of course. Those men and their leader are pure evil. Anything to help out another animal. They are evil. They captured my parents and were trying to capture me too. I miss them so much. I can tell how sad my new zebra friend was. Do you know where they took them? Of course. It's not too far from here. My name is Stripe. Nice to meet you, Stripe. Now, show me the way. Let's set your family free. On day seven, Stripe brought me over to a gladiator outpost. I noticed a cage there that was full of zebras. Look, Stripe, your family. Oh no, they don't look so good. Stay here. I went ahead and snuck forward. I noticed there were lots of men on guard here. There was no way I can take all of these guys at once. You think Invictus is going to enjoy our catch? Maybe. It's not the fire lion, but who cares? The show must go on. The show? What show? I then noticed nearby trees and had an idea. I snuck my way through and used my fire slash to set the trees on fire. I then ran away and watched. Come on, spread. The fire all began to spread, which alerted the guards. Fire! We need to put it out before it spreads to the camp. All the men then left, and I knew I had a short window. I rushed over to the zebras, who were all surprised to see me. Fire lion? Now's not the time. Let's go. I set them free, and we all left together back to Stripe. 
son! Mom! Thank you, Fozo. This means a lot. Of course. I've heard about you and know of your quest. You seek the five spirits of the fire amulet. Yeah, I am looking for the second one. Well, young one, I know exactly where you can find it. On day eight, I sent the zebras off towards my base and was on my way towards the second fire spirit, the scorpion. I just hope he's friendly. I followed the zebra's directions until I found an entryway into a sacred tomb of some sorts. Okay, scary. I made my way through, trying not to set off any traps. After a long trek, I finally reached an ancient tomb site. Inside, it held an intimidating scorpion statue. Yep, I'm in the right place. Um, hello, fire scorpion, sir? Just then, a fire scorpion emerged from the statue. Is that a fire lion? Ah, I see you are the holder of the fire amulet. That's right. It was gifted to me from my father, and I need it to stop an evil that is hurting us animals. As a spirit, I have found it hard to be brought peace. No one deems worthy enough to be the true protector of the savannah until we find him or her. I shall not rest. Well, that person is me. What do I have to do to prove it? The scorpion then left forward and stung me with his poison. Ah! I started to feel extremely dizzy. Why? You think you're worthy? Prove it. That poison running inside of you is deadly and will make you hallucinate. You must fight it. And if you lose, you die. My vision became blurry and my head started to drift into the sky. On days 9 to 10, I found myself inside of... Wait, where am I? Is this the afterlife? I then looked up and saw the fire scorpion appear in the sky above me. But now... He was ginormous. What happened? This is the land of your hallucination. It's time to tell if you really have what it takes to be the animal's protector. Just then, poison viruses appeared and rushed towards me. So I have to fight the poison? Literally? They all left and tried to suck on my face. Ah, uh, stay away, uh, stay away. I tried my best to dodge them. Every time they would hit me, the more and more weak I started to feel. If your father was still here, he'd be so proud of you. I can't give up. Not now. I fought back, fighting through the poison. I slashed through them and even shot them with my fire shot. They were strong, but I knew if I was going to be the protector, I had to be stronger. I shot one last time and took down the last one. I did it. Well done, lion. Well done. On days 11 to 12, I awoke back inside of the tomb room. I noticed that I had upgraded. I gained five more hearts and was now a full-sized fire lion. Because of this, I had a new ability that allowed me to walk on top of lava. This is awesome. With my fire passed on to you, I have trusted you to keep the animals of this world safe. Is that understood? Yes, I understand, sir. Good. Now go on. Make me proud, Fozo. The fire scorpion then vanished and was put to sleep forever. I promise you won't regret helping me. I headed out of the tomb, and on the way out, I was able to find some iron ore. I mined it and crafted myself a set of iron tools and armor. I was on my way back to base when I ran into a large gladiator arena that was in the process of being built. It was surrounded by a lava moat, and right in the center of it was Invictus himself. On days 13 to 14, I decided to take a closer look and figure out what exactly Invictus was doing. You let Fozo destroy our camp? How stupid do you men have to be? But, 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 but sir, uh, we- Silence! We must kill that beast so that I can possess the amulet. Don't come back empty-handed. 
The men all nodded and left immediately. I would hate to be on his bad side. Oh wait, I am. Invictus then looked up at a statue. Who is that? After this, father, you will have no reason not to be happy with me. I will get that amulet and I will be the strongest gladiator to ever exist. I will put on a show. So he wants my amulet just to put on a show? To what? Hurt us animals? What a jerk. I couldn't disguise my anger any longer and drew Invictus's attention. Oh no. You? Me. I won't let you escape again. I won't. Invictus charged at me and I knew that I had to run. I tried, but he was just too fast. He hit me once with his spear and I was already down to one heart. How strong is this guy? I tried to escape the arena, but with quickly cut off at the lava moat by Invictus. I thought I was done for. That's when an idea sparked. Using my newest upgrade, I was able to sprint across the moat. I turned around, filled with fear. Oh, you are scared. I can sense it. <laughs> I'll be right there when you least expect it. The clock is ticking. I have to run. I have to get far away from here. Now. On days 15 to 18, I barely made it back to base. I felt my heart beating fast. I could have died. Bozo, there you are. Are you all right? I am now, Jenga. I am now. I turned and saw Stripe and his family at our base. They didn't have homes yet. I went over and made them some that I thought would best suit them. Hopefully now they can feel like they have a safe place to live. How do you guys like it? Like it? We love it. It's good to see that you've gotten stronger too. Yeah, thanks to you guys. I looked over and saw Stripe's family building a farm next to their home. Us zebras love farming. We promise we will keep this place nice and fed. Awesome. I went and added my second pillar and done. Two down, three more to go. Jenga then walked over to check on me. While you were out on your journey, you'll be happy to know that I found out about the third spirit you need to go out and find, otherwise known as the Fire Crocodile. Fire Crocodile? So what, does he swim in lava lakes? Probably, I don't know. Nearby, there's a swamp known as the Ashen Vines. Find that place, and you might just find the crocodile. On days 19 to 22, I made my way towards the Ashen Vines. It didn't take long for me to realize I was headed in the right direction. All the grass and the terrain slowly but surely was turning into ash. That is when I saw a lava lake surrounded by fiery swamp trees. In the middle of it lied a magma hillside holding a tomb. Is this it? Is this where the fire crocodile resides? Why, yes, it is. A crocodile appeared, hovering over its tomb. Hello, um, I have come here for... I am aware why you are here. Even dead, I can still see the amulet that rests upon you. You wish to set me to rest. That's right. I need to. Not just for me, but a lot of animals are being hurt. My family, they have all passed down a sacred jewel. One that I have lost in my lifetime. I know that I can't truly rest without it. I can go find it for you. Let me help. If you wish to, know that it resides where you are your weakest, deep within the water of a dangerous river not far from here. If you find my jewel, you shall put me to rest. The fire crocodile then vanished. Okay, before I find a jewel, I'm gonna have to find out how I can survive underwater as a fire lion. How hard can it be? On days 23 to 26, I made my way to a large river. Maybe water won't hurt me that bad. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Ah, never mind. Well, great. How am I supposed to swim underwater if I can't even touch it? Just then, a water strider approached me. Hey, bud, looks like you've gotten yourself in quite the predicament, huh? What if I told you I can help you out here? You can? How? Whoa, whoa, slow down, okay? It just so happens that I'm in a little predicament myself. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Why would I scratch your back? 
I, I, it's, it's just a saying, genius. Oh my goodness, follow me. I follow the Strider over to a coastal camp. What is this? This was my vacation home, but that bird right there is always flying around, causing me issues and attacking me. I'm just trying to get tanned, man, and I'll help you with your water problem. Deal. I walked over. Maybe I can try to reason with it. It then spotted me and attacked on sight. Ah, okay, never mind. It would fly through the air and shoot me with beams through its beak. I fought back by shooting my fire blast at it. I can tell that the beast was hurting. With one more shot, the bird went flying away. Yeah, and stay out. Bravo, pal. Here, eat this. The strider threw me over a water fungus. You want me to eat it? Just do it, all right? Stop being a crybaby. Okay, okay. I did as the strider told me to. And once I ate it, a water aura was sent throughout my body. Awesome. On days 27 to 29, I jumped inside of the river and now didn't take any damage. Better hurry quick, pal. The effect is only temporary. I listened to the strider and started to swim down deep below the river. Come on, where can this jewel be? I swam and swam until I saw gold shimmering deep below. Perfect. I went down and managed to find an underwater treasure room in the middle of of it lied the gem. I was about to grab it when a giant underwater rock fell in the way. My treasure. What? But that gem, it doesn't belong to you. Me no care. The straddler charged in and started to attack me. Hey, wait. It didn't care though and started to throw rocks at me under the water. Ouch. We kept fighting back and forth, but I soon realized it was pointless. Stop it. There has to be some way I can get the gem, can't there be? No, treasure only thing that keep me company. Strad has no friends. Well, what if I can change that? I can tell the rock beast was intrigued. Um, give me one second. I went out and found the water strider from earlier. What do you want, huh? You will be perfect. I brought them back and introduced them to each other. No, Fred. Yeah, yeah, buddy, calm down. The rock beast was happy, and because of it, he allowed me to take the gem. Thanks. No, thank you. Come on, bud. Let's go tan together. On days 30 to 32, I made it back to the lava lake and heard a whisper through the air. Let the lake consume it. I threw the gem inside of it, which caused a huge burst of lava. Whoa! I then felt my body changing. I gained five hearts and felt so much stronger than I ever had. I now had fire aligned over my body and two saber-toothed tusks. Because I was stronger, I had a new flame attack ability. Awesome! On days 33 to 35, I returned back home to base. I looked around at all of my animal friends and saw everyone was making themselves at home. The zebras were farming and supplying all of us with food while Jenga was planning for our next mission. Knowing I would keep growing stronger and stronger, I decided to upgrade my den to serve as a symbol for all animals who were in need. I also went over and added my third pillar. Once all five are done, those gladiators will know not to mess with me. Fozo, there you are. We had trouble nearby here a day or two ago. You did? Yep, those coyotes are out on patrol. They want to find you and take revenge for kicking them out of their gravesite. Thankfully, they didn't find our home. Don't worry, Jenga. I'll find them and handle this. Just as I finish my sentence, I notice a new set of smoke coming from the distance. Could that be the coyotes? On days 36 to 38, I followed the smoke, hoping to find a coyote camp. Then, a couple of snakes slithered by me. Whoa! Run away! Those evil men! Our home is destroyed! 
need. What are you talking about? The snakes didn't listen though and kept slithering out. I entered the desert and there waiting for me was a large gladiator mining site. Countless gladiators were there, mining away, stripping the desert of all its resources. Oh no, poor desert animals. Yes, with these resources, our arena shall be built up in no time. Invictus, he's here. And you, my number two. I am now entrusting you to go out and find the Fire Lion. I need that amulet. Sir, yes, sir. I must focus on this arena. Do not let me down. Invictus left. Great, now I have more people looking for me? I was about to leave until I saw the coyotes running from the desert. Oh no, they're gonna get themselves hurt. Hey dude, we just heard your whole conversation with your boss guy here, and we wanna join you. That fire lion is a pain. Pathetic animals. You really think we would need your help? Mars started to walk towards them, and I can tell they were scared. But we can help. We are hunters and- Silence! The number two then sliced his sword and took <laughs> out two of the coyotes. Oh my goodness. No! You, you monster! Take this one to the prison area. We need extras for Invictus's show. On days 39 to 42, I knew that I couldn't just let the last coyote die. While they were stubborn, they were still animals. I snuck through the mining operation, trying to perfectly time the gladiators mining. I went deep inside an underground prison area, and after a bit of searching, I was able to find the last coyote trapped inside of a cell. My friends, my dear friends. Hey, I'm here to get you out. Ah, you! Are you gonna hurt me? What? No. I then opened his cage and let him out. Look, no animal deserves what happened to you. I'm sorry for your loss. Those gladiators? They're pure evil. They don't care about anything besides themselves. Why do you think I'm trying to take them down? Yeah, I'm sorry. I see that now. And I may actually know a way I can help you out. Really? That's great. But first, let's get out of here. The coyote agreed. And together, we both were able to escape the operation site. Now, far off in the distance, he seemed excited to tell me about... One of the fire spirits. I know where you can find him. Oh, yeah? Where is that? He is known as the fire vulture. And I know exactly where he resides. On days 43 to 45, my new friend brought me to one of the coldest biomes I had ever stepped foot in. I looked around. Everything looked so... Dead? Well, that's because everything is. Follow me, you scary beast. I followed the rude coyote until we reached a gravesite. The vulture is here? Not exactly. But the entryway is... Entryway to where? He then brought me over to a headstone that was much larger than the rest. Your fire. You need to use it. Okay. I shot my fire out, which caused an entryway to appear. Awesome. All right. You're on your own now. Good luck, lion. He left. Why did he seem so scared? I went down until I reached a dead looking catacomb. In the center of it lied what looked to be an orb of some sorts. Okay. I went over and touched it, which caused the entire room to shake. Oh no, what's happening? Before I knew it, everything turned white. On days 46 to 47, my vision came back to me. Ah, where am I? I looked around and saw nothing but black and a large, vast gravesite. This is what awaits in the future. I turned, only to see the fire vulture sitting on a ledge above, staring down at me. You are giant. Did you say future? In front of you potentially lies all animals that reside in the savannah, the desert, you name it. If the gladiator wins, this will become reality. Wait, so you know about the gladiator? Of course. As a vulture, I am the eyes and ears of what resides in the living world. It is my job. And I know yours is to set me to peace. I have to. It's the only way I can stop Evictus. I shall help you. 
if you save my son's spirit. It has been trapped deep within an ancient temple in the land of the dead. I'm sorry, did you say land of the dead? But I'm alive. And I shall not be set to peace while my son is trapped in a prison forever. Save my son and I shall give you the essence of my fire. You've got yourself a deal. Where is this temple? On days 48 to 50, I left the vision and went off to search for the land of the dead. It doesn't sound too creepy, does it? I was making my way through a lush forest until I was met with an opening. The vulture told me my way to the temple was this way, but it just led me to a train station? What the? I watched as ghosts got on board and there was a ghost conductor. One way ticket to da -da 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 Dead Central. Let's go, people. Hurry it up. Hurry it up. Um, excuse me. Does this lead to the land of the dead? Why? Yes, it does. Ticket, please. Ticket? No, I don't have a ticket, but I really need to. No ticket. No passage. Now stop wasting my life away. Oh, wait. I don't have one. <laughs> I quickly realized that all of these ghosts were cold. We have no body heat. And these stupid soul flames don't heat us up at all. I can help you with that. I went around the train and used my fire abilities to change the soul flames into regular ones. I can tell that all of the ghosts now were happier. My goodness, heat. This feels amazing. You know what, lion? You can ride with us. You earned it. On days 51 to 53, the train stopped inside of a dead looking area. Is this? Yep, the land of the dead. Enjoy! The conductor quickly went back inside of the train. Great, right, I'm here. I walked throughout the land until I was met with a very large black temple. This has to be it, the Temple of the Abyss. I walked inside and found a large warm lit room that had an ancient tomb lying in the middle of it. Just then, a small soul vulture appeared outside of it. Please help me. This is the soul. I went over to try to open the closed tomb, but was quickly interrupted by a large bite. Ah! I turned, only to be face to face with a deadly guardian. Literally. Uh, stay back. The guardian didn't listen and started to attack me. It had a massive mouth and kept trying to bite me whole. The dead shall consume you. Ooh, stay away from me. I used everything I had on the deadly guardian, but nothing was working. Does fire not hurt your skin? That's when an idea sparked. Don't aim for his skin. I perfectly waited for the guardian to open its mouth again. And once it did, I shot fire directly inside of it, which defeated the monster for good. Sweet. I went over to the tomb and mined open a hole, which released the fire vulture's son. Thank you, lion. My soul can finally be released. He flew off, and a sense of pride filled within me. You did it, Fozo. You did it. On days 54 to 56, I was summoned back to the fire vulture's realm. Whoa, you can just do that? I can when you've impressed me, Fozo. Well done. I then started to float up high, and in a flash, I upgraded. I gained five more hearts and felt my body's strength increase heavily. I got a new ability, which allowed me to summon fire souls to aid me in combat. Sweet! I've never felt so strong before in my life. On days 57 to 63, I went home and saw that the coyote was there, scaring Stripe. Hey! Boo! Ah! Stay away from me! <laughs> this is great! Can you cut it out? Uh, sorry. Don't worry, Stripe. He won't hurt you. I went over to a new spot of our base and made our new coyote friend a home to stay in. It's not a grave site, but it'll do. Thanks. You know, as a coyote, I am skilled at hunting. I'll be sure to gather meat for our base as a food supply. Thanks. Hopefully now you can finally feel like you belong somewhere. After that, I went ahead and built up our fourth pillar. I just need one more to go. And then we're ready. I then looked over and saw Jenga aiding to a kangaroo. Hey, 
What's going on? The kangaroos, they've been attacked. Oi, the rest of my people, those gladiators, they took down our entire outpost in search of the fire kangaroo's spirit. They are the real animals. It's okay. If you are strong enough to, why don't you show me where your outpost is? I think it's time I show them to stop messing with us animals. On day 64 to 68, the kangaroo was able to bring me to its kangaroo outpost. Instead of them being free though, running their empire, they were all stuck inside of cages. That's right, everyone. Round them all up. We need to see if they know where that stupid fire kangaroo is. Should lead us right to the fire lion. He's hurting them because of me? This filled me with so much rage. Please, sir, let us go. Silence. The second in command then hit the kangaroo with his sword, which greatly wounded him. I will get what information I can from you. And once done, you will be thrown into the dungeons forever. Not if I have anything to say about it. No, wait. I didn't listen, though, and ran to the camp fully exposing my location. Small gladiators noticed and started to charge in towards me. Their swords hurt quite a bit, but thanks to my new upgrades, I was able to take them down in groups. I am much stronger now. The last bunch pushed me, but I took them out with ease. Oh, wow. <laughs> we finally meet, Fire Lion. Yeah, we do. I've seen what you've been doing, and it's wrong. All of it is. Us animals, we have emotions too. You think I care? All I care about is making Invictus happy. And that will only happen when I take what is around your precious neck. And I will not let him down. I'm sorry to tell you this, but that's not going to happen. So be it. On day 69 to 71, the gladiator rushed towards me. He swung his massive sword, which did lots of damage. Thanks to my new upgrade, though, I was able to stand a chance. I shot him with everything that I had and used my new fire souls to aid me as well. <laughs> you think this hurts? You are weak. He kept attacking and attacking and attacking. Ouch! His sword is so strong. I tried using my new attacks to my advantage, even trying to ground slam him, but he was just far too fast for me. I was in a losing battle. He hit me one last time, and I knew I was close to being done for. Oh, poor, poor lion. You really thought you stood a chance, didn't you? How naive of you. I looked and saw that I still had one last fire soul left. He flew off, and for some reason, I knew exactly what he was planning. I watched far off as my fire soul aimed and hit the kangaroo's cage head on, letting them out. Oi, thanks. The gladiator was too distracted to notice, though. Just remember, you are a stupid animal, and you never amounted to anything to begin with. You will die here now, alone. He's not alone. I looked over and saw all of the kangaroos standing there in front of the gladiator. How did you escape? Charge! The kangaroos and I collectively fought him off. It was a losing fight before, but now with the power of these animals by my side, we were winning. I used my fire blast on him one last time, which defeated him. Take that. Oi, thank you so much for saving us, sir. That evil man, he wanted to know where our fire kangaroo ancestor was. We didn't trust him at all, though. But you do know where he is, don't you? The kangaroo seemed a bit skeptical. Look, I know you couldn't trust him, but you can trust me. I promise. Oh, you're right. Go north of here and find Kangaroo Rock Mountain. He resides there. On day 72 to 74, I ventured out north. After a short period, I was able to find a mountain much different than the ones I've seen before. This one had a stone kangaroo head carved out of the side. Welp, here I am, Kangaroo Rock Mountain. As I got closer, I began to hear whispers coming from the stone's mouth. Could it be? 
I climbed up and reached the monument. Once inside of its mouth, I knew my suspicions were correct. Come to put the final fire spirit to rest, have you? Yes, I have. And I have a feeling you already know why. Correct. The tricky thing is, I want to rest, Lion, more than anything. But for some reason, my heart doesn't want it. Do you know why that is? Do you think there's something stopping you? Why, yes. It's the fire essence that lives within me. It's stopping me from eternal rest. And I wish for your help. What? Do you want me to remove the fire from within you? I mean, that just sounds crazy. Nothing in this world is too crazy. I will show you that now. Just then, I felt a huge surge of firepower connect between the fire kangaroo and myself. Ah! ah! I looked around and was now who knows where. You are within my heart, Fozo. I looked off in the distance and saw a fire wisp and watched as it flew off quickly. Go, catch the fire essence wisp. Once done, you will have successfully taken the fire essence from within me, allowing me to rest. Good luck, Fozo. On day 75 to 77, I was running throughout the field trying to find the fire wisp. Come on, why is it so fast? Every time I would spot it, it would just fly off again. This is so frustrating. I have to stun it. I waited for the wisp to stop moving around and knew I had one shot to hit him correctly. Come on, please work. I shot out my fire shot and hit it down to the floor. While stunned, I ran over and was about to pick it up. Suddenly, the entire area began to shake. What's happening? The fire wisp I was about to catch then grew larger and larger and larger. They monster now! Oh no. On day 78 to 80, the now monstrous fire wisp began to attack me. Its fiery attacks were very strong. It used its flying ability to its advantage and would fly up to shoot me from above. I did my best and kept trying to fight back. I fought back harder than I ever had before in my life. I then ground slammed it, which caused it to shrink back down to its normal size. Then I picked it up. Awesome! Just then, I was brought back to Kangaroo Rock Mountain. Did I do it? Yes, well done. It's now up to you. Be the guardian of all. My body began to transform one last time. I gained 10 more hearts and felt my muscles and strength begin to grow. I could now do an insanely powerful fire rush attack. Awesome! I knew that after all of my hard work, I was ready to face Invictus. On days 81 to 85, I was making my way back home when I noticed something horrible. Everything was destroyed? Oh no! I watched as the animals all around were scared for their lives. Ah, finally, a fire lion joins us. The animal's protector. Well, it looks like you weren't here to protect your people from this, were you? You! I was about to charge in, but Invictus signaled me to stop. I would think again. Just then, Jenga crouched out, looking weaker than ever. <coughs> My goodness, what did you do? Doesn't matter. You want him back? Come to the arena and get him. The two of us will be waiting. Tick tock. Invictus escorted Jenga out, and I knew that I had to save him. I looked around at all of my friends. I'm sorry, guys. I should have been here. It's not your fault. Yeah, that mean gladiator guy is going to pay. You're right. He will. Together, all of us animals went around the base and repaired it back up. I had to make sure that nothing like this could ever happen again. Once the base was fully repaired, I went ahead and built up the final pillar. And done. With all five pillars complete, I knew my base was finished. Because of it, a fiery aura began to shoot out throughout my home, turning everything to white. On days 86 to 90, I looked around, only to see my dad there in front of me. Dad! Oh my goodness! Son, 
It is so good to see you. The amount of progress you made, I couldn't be more proud. That evil gladiator, he took me from you. He's hurt so many people. I know, son, but I have been there with you every step of the way. If anyone can fight back and take what's rightfully ours, it's you. I sure hope so. Hope so, my dear boy, I know so. Just then, my vision was brought back to me. I looked around at all of my animal friends and knew that this had to end. It's time we fight back and take what's rightfully ours. That's right. Oh, yeah, baby. The next time you see me, Invictus will be done for. On days 91 to 94, I made my way over to Invictus's arena, and I noticed that it was now fully built. He's putting up a show, all right. I noticed countless gladiators there, holding guard out front. It's the lion, get him! They all charged, and so did I. I went in and started to use everything I had against them. They tried their best with their swords, but at the end of the day, I was just far too strong for them to handle me. After I used my latest fire rush ability, it sent the gladiators running scared. Oh, he's too strong, run! Then suddenly, I heard a voice calling from inside. It's time for the show. Yes, it is. On days 95 to 99, I walked through the corridors, only to see Jenga incredibly weak inside one of the rooms. Jenga! Pozo, my boy, what are you doing here? I'm here to stop this and to save you. I'm afraid there's no saving me, Fozo. I feel so weak. That gladiator, his blade, I tried to fight back, but- No, you can't give up now. We have to get through this together. It's what my dad would have wanted. Your dad would have wanted you to protect these animals. And I, I helped you with that. <sighs> Beat Invictus, Fozo. Beat him for all of us. Jenga? Jenga, no! Jenga was gone. And right after that, the gates in front of me opened, only to see Invictus in the middle of his gladiator arena waiting for me. On day 100, I walked out and was face to face with Invictus. I looked around and saw a huge crowd of gladiators watching us. Yes, Fire Lion. Do you like it? The world's biggest show yet. You are a maniac and you will soon learn to regret everything you have done. Oh, really? Then bring it. Invictus and I both clashed which caused the audience to uproar. He was really fast and used his expertise in sword fighting to his advantage. He would jump and slice his weapon into me, which did a lot of damage. I tried to fight back against him, but most of my hits ended up being blocked by his shield. I tried the best that I could, but could tell that I was losing. No, I can't lose. I can't. It's now up to you. Be the guardian of all. If anyone can fight back and take what's rightfully ours, it's you. Beat Invictus, Fozo. Beat him for all of us. Fight, Fozo. Everyone is counting on you. You can do this. You can do this. I leapt up and slammed a very powerful fire attack, which sent Invictus back. He was clearly stunned, and I used this to my advantage. I did everything I could and everything I had against him. My fire souls, fire shot, you name it. I gave my all and thought about all the animals I was protecting. No! No! With one final powerful fire slam, Invictus was down for the count. With him gone, all animals can be treated with respect. 